All right, shall we? Hey, we uh, are in our new place and we put up the Christmas tree for the first time yesterday. Oh, yeah? And it's quite nice. It's 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 fun to always have that, uh, you know, that vibe uh, and such. And it is a fake Christmas tree. And I don't know about you and your household, but fuck real trees forever. It's done. So, it's okay, I, I have a, I have a kind of hypocrisy with this. When my dad tries to explain to me that, like, we're getting a fake tree at home in my parents' house... I am like I absolutely not. Uh-huh. uh-huh. I do I no. I want to <laughs> sit on that couch. I want to eat shortbread biscuits uh-huh. and I want to I want to smell that real tree smell. And a, okay? a living tree must be there. Yes. Uh, I, uh, unacceptable. Except uh, for uh, now in my apartment. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Now uh, what now what, the, the, what those, happens when the, the you trees, have to deal with the it? The trees uh they they the the the, the little thistles get everywhere. <laughs> Wooly, I'm a, I'm a busy guy. I can't. I I, do, I don't have time. Exactly, exactly, dude. I remember specifically when I was growing up, and like my dad got the tree that was way too big for the basement. It could mm. not fit, but it, the flex had to be done nonetheless. And like the tree is literally bending its way off the ceiling. Oh, it's too yeah. big for it's it's bent over. You can't put a, a star yeah, on it, top. It's it's question marking. It's question marking. And then yep. like the process of getting it out of the house is the worst shit ever. Everyone's mm-hmm. got tons of splinters. And like for the rest of the year, period, the entire carpet is just laced with bombs of of uh, fucking spikes and and oh yeah, all they're, the they're, bullshit. They're they're part of your home now. Like that's for you. The, hey, that is a permanent fucking problem to deal with. And it's just like, no, we're done. We're done. Christmas spirit can fuck off with that. We get the box <laughs> out. You flip out the plastic. You shove it in place. It's good to go. It's even yeah. pre-lit. There's the, there's the quote from Wooly Versus. Uh, Christmas spirit can go fuck itself. It, that we're done, man. <laughs> we're never going <laughs> back, dude. You know? Oh, uh, you, you a big Christmas guy? You like, you like celebrating Christmas? I mean, it's nice, you know, it's, 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 um, it, like, I, I have a, a weird, like, I guess it, it's always been celebrated, but there's also been a part where, because I grew up as a church boy and stuff, there's a, a little bit of the, like, maybe we shouldn't be celebrating it for some religious reason. So some of the people were like, no, let's not. And so there's a bit of a weird thing there. Sure. Okay. Yeah. But it's it's overall it's a nice vibe and and yeah, yeah I, I I I appreciate it and and I I also have a place where we like to leave up the Christmas lights all year round even okay like yeah it's just a it's a you know like around the banisters and stuff like that it's just a it's it's nice you know it, it's it's kind of a weird one for me because like you know when you just get like weird shit in your head as a kid and you're like this is how this works so mm. the way I used to think of like prayers growing up a very catholic boy was Mm. that you would get like a prayer point every time you said a prayer prayer so you said a hail mary you get a little prayer point okay Um, and the way you cash in those prayer points is at christmas for santa presents oh there's a currency no one ever like no one this isn't this never existed outside my own mind. It just formed this way <laughs> in my head, okay? And so there's Christmas There's microtransactions Christ- that you have yeah, to yeah, like- you, you gotta be getting your reps in. You you gotta be <laughs> co- collecting collecting the diamond the yellow diamond currency to cash it in. And so Christmas would become a very stressful time for me because I'd be like, I fucking I gotta say And if you, oh, the prayers you say at mass quadruple points quadruple points okay quadruple so you get your points. good boy points yeah now is there is there a secondary currency to this mobile game that is coal uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so i would and, say the secondary currency is morality it's okay being, it's being good Be, being a good being good, good person being good yes yes yeah, yes yeah, okay yeah okay. but not as important as the first like um, <laughs> okay here here's some secret 
here's some secret tech, Willie. You can be a fucking little terror as long as you say in those prayers. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So okay. uh, coming up to Christmas, I would be very anxious about getting enough prayers in in mass to maximize my potential Christmas Santa Hall. And that mentality has never left me, not in the term that I say prayers anymore, because I do not, uh, but <laughs> I, I get that like, oh, I gotta, I gotta be fucking doing stuff. Cause, mm-hmm. but, and mm-hmm. yeah, it's, 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 okay. it's a weird one. The closest thing I have to that is the phase where the moment I start eating food and I go, oh shit, I didn't say grace. Right, Re- back okay, in so the day, grace that, is not that, grace is not a thing in Ireland. Really? Yeah, even like I think I think among the most devout, gr- even. Gr- oh, see, I think grace is a Christian thing as opposed to a Catholic thing. Uh, okay, okay. In fact, I would say that grace borders on the Irish concept of having notions. Having notions. Yep. Yeah. So we run. I've explained this to you before. You talked, right? yeah. You've talked about it, but it's like just saying thank you for for the Being meal, rub a dub dub. Thanks the for the idea, grub. Wooly. The idea that you have something <laughs> to be thankful for. <laughs> Who the fuck are you? <laughs> oh, 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 I'm glad oh, I'm alive. You're fuck you. you. <laughs> Sit there and take it. Yeah, no, that Be is miserable. Oh yeah, my like, god, we run, we run into this at, like every <laughs> like I got a bunch of people on Discord um, wishing me like a happy Thanksgiving and like explaining to them not just that like not only is Thanksgiving not a thing in Ireland, it is maybe the least Irish thing possible. God damn, dude. Yep, yep. The concept of just getting together and going, we're happy for what we have. How dare you? <laughs> Damn. Well, so and like, I, we I, have, I, I, I joke about it. I also yeah. feel it in my bones a little bit. Right, right, like, right. Like, right. There, it, like, it is so ingrained into me that, like, we're laughing. I kind of believe it. Irish guilt. It's a thing. That's yeah, the term. Oh, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. We, I've, I've heard. No, but the, the, but with grace, it was just a little bit of a like, if something entered, if you bite into a, uh, like a snack and you're like, fuck, I didn't say thank you for the snack. It feel, it's like the food in your mouth is poisonous and cursed until you bless it, you know? It, it like, Whoa! It was, the feeling... So you're exercising the food. Yeah, the, the food is un... It is not thanked. You have not thanked God for it. It is dangerous to consume until... It has been like blessed essentially <laughs> by saying your grace. Cause because that's how the ghosts get in. That's exactly how it gets in. And so like <laughs> the times where you I've bitten in too early, it's like fuck, fuck, fuck. You know, and, you're like, mm, mm. and then you close your eyes and then you quickly go, thank you so much for this. And then you got it, you have to, you know, because other but, right. uh, yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. And the most powerful yeah. version of this is when everyone is together around the table and you hold hands, and like the strongest food demons can be exercised <laughs> by like a big family <laughs> grace. You know, it's bells above, get out of, get out of my, get out of my <laughs> crackers. I don't. That's know. it. The more passion, the better. You know, and no like, Satan yeah, in just, my mashed potato. It's very necessary. So that mm. was like really hard to deprogram. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, I think I think the the longer we do this, the more we are going to wander into the very strange and specific differences between both our very intense religious upbringing. And I got some stories, but maybe not episode one. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe we can save the yes. insane religious backstories. <laughs> For something that is not the pilot. You know what? That's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Willie, 2023, it's nearly in the books. How you feeling? I have had a pretty good year. Things have happened during the year, believe it or not. There is a things list of things that have occurred. Happened. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How's your year? You know... <laughs> <laughs> I was struggling for the words 
I think maybe the silence says more than anything okay. ever could. <laughs> Dot 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 dot. Yeah, yeah. It has been it has been a year. Yes, that has definitely happened. Um, but you know there was some good stuff too. Yes. Yeah, I I would you know look if we just forget about the absolute flaming nightmare that is reality and concentrate just on fictional media for a moment. If we just highlight the distractions, you say. <laughs> like, if we just shut our eyes real tight <laughs> just for a second. And close and, and put, hold our heads. And, and pray. push away and the if pray. We, and, and, and if we pray around the year, we can exercise the demon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just for the duration of this podcast. Um, Indeed. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, Wooly... People are probably wondering what's happening here. And we're not going to give it all away up front. But we got a job to do. Buy me Title of this first, podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Whoa. whoa oh, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Wooly, you know what that disgusting little sub-community does. Do not encourage that. <laughs> don't feed. Oh, God. Don't feed. Don't feed. <laughs> don't feed. Um, and that's the last we'll say about that. Anyway. Um, yeah. Look. The title of this podcast is The Best Collection, okay? We are bringing you a curated list of 20 items from at least your third or fourth favorite social media influencers. Uh, Z-tier, shit-tier uh, uh, e-celebs have yeah, opinions Yeah, absolutely. The, and... um, the informally known as the, oh, are they still going? Rank. <laughs> Whatever happened to those guys? <laughs> huh, that's good for them. Someone, wow. some, someone really, I was on a podcast recently and someone really unironically said to me, oh, no way. I, I used to watch your videos like five years ago. Yeah. No. Oh, no, totally. And absolutely. I've, I've been, I've absolutely caught stray bullets left and right of just like, oh, fuck, yo, he's still around. That's so sick. <laughs> You know, <laughs> just like, ugh, ugh, hi, what's up? Yeah, it's a very specific, uh, <laughs> very specific pain. God. <laughs> like, like on one hand, they're happier there, but on the other, in their mind, you stopped existing five years ago. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Like, like, yeah, I'm just like, you know, you know, the, the, the cover of like what it was like Spider-Man No More were just like the mask is in the trash, you know, mm -hmm. and he's like walking. But, like, I'm just like, it's the, the feeling is that like, yeah, like my dreads just were ripped off and tossed in the trash. And I walked away into the internet distance, never to be seen again. So I, I would say, Wooly, what it's very like is like that comic, that Spider-Man comic you just described. It's like Spider-Man himself finding that in the trash and being like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still here. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a very specific feeling, you know. Yeah, yeah, it sure is. But um, look, Wooly, we, we've we've done a fair few things in the past, and um, most notably and recently, the four part psychological horror series slash anime review, Gone in sixty seconds. Ah, and um, we're mentioning we, it, are we? We are mentioning it. <laughs> Okay, and canonically, we are acknowledging its existence. We are acknowledging right. it. And Here we go. I'd, we've kind of talked about it in various pieces, and I feel like... I feel like maybe we're done with that series. I think we've hit the highest highs of what could be accomplished with the concept, yep. and then we dragged it to the lowest lows. Yeah. Yeah. And then whatever lied further beyond to get to a conclusion that felt right. Yeah. And I think, like, I'm not saying never, like, maybe an idea mm -hmm. hits us. I think we were cool leaving it there. But what does he think of the Chimera <laughs> 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 How will we know? <laughs> and look, I just want to say for the people who might be upset about that who are listening to this, if it sounds like we are laughing at you, we absolutely are. <laughs> I 
I mean, look, uh, look, man. look, look, look. Uh, anything could happen, okay? But I guess the conclusion of Gone in 60 Seconds the left a certain was void. was so much fun. It, it was, was so much fun. fun. I genuinely, like, that is Come the most on. fun I have ever had making anything. And God I'm incredibly it. proud of what, yeah, it was great. Anyway, look, the point is, <laughs> I think we found ourselves, Wooly, in a little, um, what would you call it? Impasse, perhaps. Yeah, maybe I'm leaving a Cold little collab collaboration void. Because it's like, oh, mm. shit, what do, what do we do? And, you know, our first answer was, what if we get together at the end of the year and just start listing all the fucking cool shit that we played and watched and read or walked into this year? That is the best collection. And that is the what you, dear viewer slash, slash listener, are about to experience. I like that. Well Hell put. Yeah. It is it is um, a collection of the best experiences of this year. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um and I, I think uh uh as well like uh, well just the last bit on, on on Gone in 60 is just like um the like as you could see I think we the, just so that they know like we would film a season of that and then just put it to bed until inspiration struck yeah right yeah and it did each time we did one of those seasons it was like inspiration struck it what was, if we came back and did this? it was one of us coming up to the other and being like i have a fucking idea and then the other one taking that idea and making it at least twice as good and that and that to me is the only way that season it, i'm sure people are listening to this having no idea what we're talking about you can find it all on woolly verses we'll link to it in the description it mm -hmm. might be my favorite thing i've ever done <laughs> that is awesome that's super cool I'm, I'm really happy to hear that i mean but but just to say that like you know so even it, like even with this like saying like oh yeah well that's probably where where it's it's a, a nice finale to it because it ends on a, on a fucking insane note like inspiration can still strike and you, again like you said never say never but mm -hmm. like it would have to be something really nuts and good and work for that to to come you know because we've done a lot we've done it i you know yeah yeah so yeah it's like we have like we have taken that concept and not less so beaten it to death and more so atomic pile driver it into the center of the planet <laughs> like megaton punch we cracked pop star in half you know <laughs> just in, in the fucking uh, yeah, yeah yeah absolutely but look agreed where, where the old must die new shall rise and that is the best collection, 2023. Mm -hmm. From the ashes. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. Wooly, listen, I don't think either of anyone is ever going to accuse either of us for being um, concise in our recommendations. So not only do we have 10 items to pick each, we also got to get through some honorable mentions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's no, there's, hard. There's, there's stuff that I just couldn't not talk about in a podcast of the coolest shit that happened this year. Agreed. Um, um, and before we start, how much did you agonize over these choices? It was brutal. And, and I think the key, the key thing is just like, again, trying to, cause you're, 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 you're it's your, what are the experiences that you've had? And like, how do you, I I hate top ten lists. I've always people know this about me. I've always been just like, oh god damn it, right? You know, um, stack your apples and your oranges. You must organize them. You know, it's it's so yeah. It is uh, definitely agonizing. Is I've Animal probably, Crossing better than Forza Motorsport Three? <laughs> I think, like, I've come up with something that I can live with at this day in this particular hour, and as just. just get it out and then fuck it and move on it'll probably upset me tomorrow and it'll upset me yesterday but for today it'll have so to do. i have never I, I don't do like a well actually i do have i have an ongoing series where i make lists so never mind but the only way i think you can create a list and live with yourself is to acknowledge to yourself it doesn't matter and the mm. only way to watch those lists is to also acknowledge to yourself that they don't matter 
but everyone making them and watching them secretly really thinks they matter, though. Yeah. <laughs> because yep. you, there's always a moment where you're like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You put it at number eight. <laughs> you know, yep. it doesn't yep. matter. It doesn't matter. You know, because we are creatures of human beings have to rank and categorize and folder things in life. You know? Okay. You know what? Let, let me let me present this to the audience. What I think would be fucking cool is rather than people getting, I'm sure, very upset if 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 they maybe hear one of their items not included. What? Drop your own list in the comments. Genuinely, let's see what fucking happens. I I think it would be so cool to scroll down and see the comments of this thing and see like. A bunch of people's actual lists, and it's like, oh man, this thing is like popping up a lot. Maybe I should check this out. Wooly, you look scared. You look scared. Nice, de- nice deflect, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I've been I've been doing this doing this YouTube thing a little while now. Okay, skillful deflection. <laughs> that was masterfully crafted. <laughs> uh, By the way, I'm calling out all bits. Let's go. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. 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 Honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. Would you like to? Would you like to begin, Wooly, or will I? W- will we take turns. Yeah, let's take turns. Yeah, with honorable yeah, mentions. That, that okay. seems like the right, the reasonable way to go. Okay, honorable. I'm I'm beginning the honorable mention list with um, uh, I just yeah, very quickly, uh, a meme. Actually, I would like really? to nominate a meme. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, and my, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, just to be clear. Anything is on the table here. Anything is on the table. It can be a restaurant. It can be a, uh, it can be my Dragon Ball Z snood hoodie. There you go. It, it's so, not, but like, you see, th- this thing is so fucking cozy. It, 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 it is, you just, you just wow. put it on. And oh my hoodie, God. You're warm. You are. You're, You're rocking just the warm. dragon, bro. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take it off. <laughs> that's crazy. Here. But you get the that, idea. That's wild. Okay. Yep. Well, it could be. There you go. That you know what? That might have been one of the best experiences yep. of the year. Now it's not, but it okay. could have been. But it could have been. It could have been. Yep. Um, okay. So right off the bat, I'm gonna give a a honorable mention shout out to the list of detectives that can solve the Death Note tier list. Have you seen this meme? Interesting. No, I have not. It is so good. It is so, so good. And um, if I may, I will just drop this. I will let you take a look at it. But this was made um, by Aki Works on Twitter. And it is a grid of detectives. And it's listed by two metrics. One can intuit the mechanics of the death note cannot intuit the mechanics of the death note and then on the y-axis could solve the kira case could not solve the kira case interesting it's so cool because it's a list of all these different detectives and the top leftmost prominent slot columbo can absolutely solve the case and catch kira but then as you go down you see all kinds of others like sam and max can absolutely figure it out and solve it Harry Dubois from Disco Elysium, the Diamond is Unbreakable crew, Charlie Day, they can solve it. Okay, right? okay, but hang on, hang on. Kim Kutsuragi being yes. in the could not could not solve. Am I reading this right? Could not solve. Too grounded in reality. Okay, okay. I think yeah. I think the problem Too is good that at being a detective in real life. Kim would refuse to believe that this even exists. Exactly. Oh, and Harry okay. is connected to okay. the ethereal. Yeah, no, right? I see. I see. Um, you know, okay. it, you know, if this were if True Detective were on the list, um, Matthew McConaughey would be in would be in that same slot of like he can connect to it, but uh, mm. Woody could not. Mm. Right. Yeah. And so you just get this great list, and then you start getting into the stuff like um, uh, uh, Naoto and Adachi and Courage the Cowardly Dog. They could not solve the Kira case, but they could intuit how the Death Note worked. <laughs> you know? I see. Okay, I get it. I get it. Right? Okay, Willie, yeah. we immediately must move on because we are only on honorable mentions. God damn it. Sorry. <laughs> Go. It's, okay. it's great. It's a great okay. meme. My, my first honorable mention this year is Pie in Dublin. That's P-I. It's a pizza restaurant, and I have described it before as the Silent Hill 2 of pizzas. What the fuck does that mean? 
I refuse to elaborate. <laughs> Next honorable mention. All right. I'm going to give a shout out to um, uh, Shin Kamen Rider or Shin Masked Rider. Uh, Hideaki Anno paying homage to the original Kamen Rider, just like he uh, he did the, the Shin Godzilla movies. And uh, if you ever wanted to see ultra-violent rider kicks that explode into bloody gore while also pondering the nature of the human soul and the true meaning of henshin, uh, check out Shin Kamen Rider, a.k.a. Shin Masked Rider. The souls. Uh, just questionless, absolute, swear do I sign. That sounds awesome. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, you know what? I feel like there was a kind of running theme of animated movies going unbelievably harder than they should this year. Mm. Um, Puss in Boots. Ooh, I forgot about Puss in Boots. Uh, Puss in Yo. Boots. Do you want to see a genuinely great DreamWorks film oh that is made God. that is made wholesale by weeaboos and people who have New Game Plus to Bloodborne because here it is uh, the this movie wish. The Last Wish fucking rules it's a beautiful God. film it has maybe the best villain of the year in mm -hmm. maybe anything I don't know um, it misses it barely misses out on my list but seriously people if you have not seen this Awesome, awesome movie. You introduced me to that playing that one scene of the introduction oh, yeah. of the film. Oh, yeah. Holy fuck, what a good movie. Yes. Awesome movie. Agreed. Um, honorable mention to um, One Piece. One Piece on Netflix. The live action One Piece. What the fuck? It's good? Yeah, it's... Dude, it's all right. It's, no, I had a good time. That was my reaction to it. Yeah. Not a question. It's... I... No. I, I, I uh, so I'm only five episodes in, having a great time. That little yeah. fuck... That little fucker who plays Luffy makes me laugh every time. He's... Right? He's got that... Just, again, well, so the way I described this, like, he's just got that, that like, complete, like, you cannot break his joy, no matter yeah. what you do. His enthusiasm, like, it doesn't matter what the fuck anyone says. And also, shout-outs to... Because, again, I, I, so I'm, I'm not up to speed on uh, or the uh, original series on the manga or anything, so this is my first experience, really. And uh, heavy on the fisheye lens, you know? Uh, but overall, the brightness, the colors, everyone's very lovable. And I love that uh, this, too, is about racism. <laughs> There's a little bit like... Huh. Okay. Sick. Where are oh, we going? One Piece is is like like One Piece has some shit to say. I didn't know. I didn't oh, know no, One Piece had no. some shit to say. <laughs> no, no, like yeah, no, there's a yeah. there, there there's a lot to get into there, but yeah, absolutely. Zoro's a goddamn himbo. Oh my god, what, don't don't get me started. Um Gunbarella. Hmm. You heard What's of this? That? No. Um, Gunbarella is, I think this is like, I talk about this in a future video, and this is the exact line I use because it's too perfect. Um, Gunbarella is celeste with guns, and the controls are tight enough that it works. Fuck, that sounds excellent. I, done. I have nothing more to say. All right. Um, uh, Black Mirror, the latest season, the episode Lock Henry. Um, oh, yeah, I've, I've, I've seen stuff about this. It's an interesting, it's a very, it's a, it's a, you know, Black Mirror style, a tragic story. Technology is involved in the classic back Black Mirror sense, but the episode has a purpose and it is phenomenal in that purpose. And it's, and it's one that it, it, it reveals itself eventually to you, but it is a critique of something that is a real world modern trend that needed to be addressed and no one was addressing it. And I'm, uh, this episode, Locke Henry does so. So okay. I have to throw that up there. Cool. Um, so this isn't exclusively a 2023 thing, but I think it's 2023 when it really started to come into its own. Um, Chainsaw Man Part 2, fucking exceptional. Mm. Okay. Yes, I started, I read uh, the first couple chapters of it, but I have not caught up. Okay. Uh, yep. Love it. Perfect. Going totally strong. new direction. Great stuff. No, no notes. Excellent. Very cool. I'm excited. Um, uh, huge shout outs to um, The Last of Us Episode 3. 
Oh, hell um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's such a great episode. Long, long time, right? So just like Bill's Town is a part of the game that I really, really liked how like different it was. Like one guy that's a prepper just sets up this whole shop and what do we do? And I had expectations for what that was going to be like. And when they get to it in the show, it's completely different and it's fucking phenomenal. Oh, and it's brilliant. just it's it's like they're, it's still a depressing story, but it's infinitely more just bittersweet and like yeah. there's a little bit of hope and in, in, in the middle yeah. of the chaos unbelievable i, I would Nick, say Nick the Offerman. best the best episode of a very good show mm. mm-hmm. 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 and just and for for changing the source material around as well you know um yeah i have to i have to give that its credit so episode three yeah. of last of us um castlevania nocturne Ooh. very good beautiful show beautiful a lot of sexy people either being or killing vampires Okay, okay. Haven't watched yet, but I from the first seasons I loved, you know. Right on. Um Killers of the Flower Moon. Martin Scorsese. Oh. The latest uh of his of his movies. Basically, um, you know, a storied director uh of a lifetime that does not have a lot of time left. And as he's getting up there in years, he's like, the stories that I have to tell matter more than ever. And I have to choose very carefully because I'm getting old. I can't direct movies forever. So when he picks it, it better be fucking worth it. And this one is absolutely worth it. It's unbelievable. Wow. Okay. Okay. That's solid. Yes. Do you want to give us like a, 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 a one line plot summary? Yes. In the 1920s, a Native American tribe became the richest people in America. And America had something to say about that. Oh, Okay, cool. Awesome. It's Sounds fucking good. crazy. Um, Zombie 100, Bucket List of the Dead. This is okay. an anime. This is an anime, a zombie anime. And I was going into it being like, there's been so many zombie animes. There's been so many zombie media. I really don't think I'm going to stick with this past the first episode. So, you know, like post-apocalypse misery? Uh-huh. That That is not in this show. This is a joyous show about, hey, your shitty office life has been obliterated by a zombie apocalypse. You now get get to live life however you want. And I think there is better anime out this year. I think Heavenly Delusion is better. I think Pluto is better. But 2023, a little grim in some ways. And Mm -hmm. this was the exact thing I needed. Okay. Wow. Uh, what was that name again? Zombie 100, Bucket List of the Dead. The name comes from the fact that he writes 100 things he wants to do before he becomes a zombie. Uh, interesting. Okay. And it's cool okay. because, like, other people write their lists and you can see their personality. So, like, a girl he kind of, like, teams up with, her list is 100 ways to stay alive in the apocalypse. And then a later villain is, like, 100 atrocities I can commit in the apocalypse. I see, I see. It's fun. It's, 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 it's real dumb. It's real fun. Nice. Uh, I'm, that, that's, I'm out of honorable mentions. I just have my big boys left, so. Okay, cool. Um, I got Run through them one, got I, got, I got one more. Uh, the band Wisp. Um, this is a very mysterious hmm. band that just appeared on Spotify. They have three tracks and it is all the most fucking I'm a sad goth thing shoegaze kind of just like man it's kind of like it's like it's like a mellow mellower deaf tones sung by a lady and it fucking rules okay i like yep. that just a band yep. out of nowhere just a band out of nowhere three tracks huh? um, okay so okay people are probably People are probably already out of breath. They're probably, man, those those were some strong recommendations. <laughs> we haven't even dropped the weights yet. Okay? <laughs> now that's the, the beat. That's the that's the baby shit out of the way. Okay? We don't we don't want to talk about it anymore. Master, allow me to go all, all out just this once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh. All right. Um, so we are now entering. The top tens. We're in it. Mm-hmm. We're officially in it. We're what? officially in it. There ain't no turning back. There's no. Ba- Are you sure? Okay. Like last chance. No. No. Actually. Actually. No. I don't. I don't think I, I can do this. 
No, no, we can do it. We can do it. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'll start this out. Coming in at number 10 on the best collection list, Wooly Side. Uh, I'm going to nominate a beverage. It's called Optifast. <laughs> Specifically, <laughs> Optifast 900 is fucking phenomenal. And here's why. This is the drink that helped me lose 80 pounds this year. And it has been a life-changing thing that has allowed me to uh, get my health in shape and uh, figure out how to uh, approach the future uh, significantly less diabetic, um, significantly more capable of uh, not losing any toes or limbs, you know, and uh, in general, just, um, I don't know, getting kind of, you know, kind of feeling myself a little bit when I can put on some clothing that fits a little nicer, you know. You, you, so, you, you, Wooly, what I would contend is you have always been an excellent looking person. Well, but, come on now, Mr. Uh, Square Jaw, Mr. Square Jaw. Uh, uh, come let's on not, now, let's, let's not do this. Mr. Let's not do this. No. Mr. Face reveal. Everyone goes, "Oh my God, he's hot." <laughs> okay, but all all I mean to say is that it was a fucking trip, like seeing you in February for my wedding, um, mm. and then seeing you maybe two months later on camera. And you having dropped like thirty five pounds or something insane? It's sci- it was psychotic. It's wild. yeah, and it's just like what the fuck is happening? And, um, and yeah, it's been just awesome seeing you fucking basically. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think. Is there an anime where someone powers up and immediately gets really shredded? Uh, but it's I, been. I, I mean, how about f- uh, Fat Boo into into Boo's second form? Right there, there you go, there you go. Um, there's another one called um, oh, oh, god damn it! I'll think of it later. But there's one okay. where basically there's this like big chunky judo guy in it, and then he dis, and then like he's not in the next episode, and people are like, um, where, where is he? And then he comes, and they're like, oh, he's training in the mountains. And then he comes back the episode after, and he's super buff. <laughs> yeah. Just, I mean, look, I'm not quite done turning into a, a grappler backy character, but mm-hmm. we'll get there, right? One step at a time. But at the very least, I'll say, like, so when, uh, um, yeah, when I, I saw you at uh, uh, Too Many Games, the you you gave me a shirt, and it was, like, a large, and you weren't really thinking about it at all. It was just, like, a normal large size shirt. And I put it on and it actually fit. And like, you don't know, but it's like, that's a huge deal. That no, I, can I, 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 I remember that because like we're, we're in our hotel room and I gave you the shirt and you just, you put it on and you looked in the mirror and like, you look great. And then you just kept looking in the mirror and being like, I'm a large. And it was genuinely one of the most wholesome things I have ever seen. <laughs> Well, cheers, man. But like, I just, it was really like, I have not been capable of doing that for the majority of my adult life, the entirety of my adult life, really. Like I was a teenager when I could, you know what I mean? So when I could wear, yeah. So um, that I attribute to Optifast and Optifast is basically, um, it's a meal replacement shake and it's like the type that uh, gives you your, uh, your protein, your carbs, your fat, your yeah, it gives you 225 calories per, you know, serving. And um, it's one of those ones that, like, it's set up that with, uh, you know, with a, a, a medical professional, like, overseeing it, you can have it literally replace your entire diet. Um, or you can have it replace a meal or two or so. But the fact that it just, like, it tastes good, it's filling, and it, like, really helped, like, get – after a while of using it, cravings for food went away and I kind of got to a place where I was like oh I'm eating or I'm, I have to get more energy in my system um and if I don't I'm gonna feel more tired than hungry you know um so yeah it was a good what, it was good so one question I'm kind of curious about Willie um so over the course of the pandemic like I definitely put on a little chunk um and it was very gradual until I one day recorded myself and was like Okay, this is not what I used to look like. Like, I had gotten middle-aged, and so I immediately started, like, researching calories and all that shit, and I dropped about, I'd say, 
35 pounds over the course of maybe seven or eight months. And even I felt like the difference in the way people react towards you changes so dramatically. Like I had people in sh- like people in the shops around me who I'd never spoken to being like, lose some weight, you know? Huh. How has, have you experienced anything like that? Oh, uh, I mean, I think mainly from like family and people that have known me for my whole life. Like, you know, uh, I think um, out and about in the world a little less so, but I'm also like not I, I, i'm pretty much in my house all day you know whatever but yeah yeah um, yeah i get you but yeah but i think uh no uh, for a lot of my family and, and and friends it's it's been like yeah definitely a like holy shit dude whoa you know like that little mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. That, that getting taken aback and it's like yeah i'm you know and, and at the same time too i mean i don't like there's like oh don't disappear on us now and you know and i yeah and i don't i don't i definitely don't like want to like go too far the other way and stuff i like i like being a little thick with two c's <laughs> yeah well like <laughs> yeah. okay this this is but, the part of this discussion i feel like i think like i genuinely think people can look fucking awesome you know at any body type like and i think if someone is like big and comfortable awesome fucking great there's mm-hmm, no like mm-hmm. inherent thing but i think like it's cool I, th- I think what I encourage everyone is just like, you know, be good with the now, but if there's something you want to get to, that's that's cool too. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. My goals my goals are like Pacific Islander body, you know? Hell yeah, Ooh. dude. Just, just lo- like wide, strong, thick, flat. I love that. that and I'm like, that's, my, that's what I like. That's what I want to get to. You know, yeah. it's solid. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, so yeah, Optifast coming in, number 10. At number 10. Um, at number 10, a beverage. Okay. So, Willie, you ever heard of a little song? This is number 10. John Side. What did the best collection, John Side? John Side. You ever heard of a little song called Aisha X Righteous? No. Okay, so this is a little song. And like all my favorite songs, it's basically take someone takes two very good songs and puts them together. I'm going to drop it in the uh, I'm going to drop it in the discord here. Someone takes two very good songs and combines them into a fucking incredible song. Okay. Um, and this song became oops, let me turn that off. This song became my weightlifting song this song became my running song this kind of became my everything's gonna be all right song okay and okay i, hope I think i've i think i've I, I think i've maybe listened to it about 400 times this year okay it's a cross up but it's a mashup between i don't it, uh, it, it it's Aisha like Aisha and yeah. righteous uh-huh uh-huh um, we will leave a link in the description for anything we can leave a link in the description of. This this song took me places this year. You liking it? You feeling it? Feeling that bass. Yep. yep. That Hell bass. yep. Hell yep. Uh, if we end up... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It, okay. It's my hope that we're walking through MAGFest and we hear this playing somewhere. Gotcha. 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 Where'd this come from? Um, I don't know, but it's not Spotify legal and people are rioting over that. I see. I see. Okay. It, it, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely drop a two. Like, yeah, so I, are you the kind of person that, like, you have, like, a, a, a track for every mood for every time of day? Like, at, at the very least, I have a playlist for that. A playlist. Okay. But you know, it's, it, it kind of sucks because last year I got really into listening to albums again. Mm. And the problem with playlists is they kind of fuck you on that, you know? And yeah. so, and I, I, I like albums because I like getting into a specific album at a specific time. And then when you hear that album, it reminds you of that time. I don't necessarily get that when I make like playlists and stuff. Okay. But okay. if you want my song of the year, it's this fucking thing. It rules. Damn. Yeah. I haven't had a lot of like music listening recently. Like I've been kind of unfortunately um, out of that because I've been spending a lot of time listening to like podcasts and things. You know, I feel like I, uh, I, I, fill my secondary time with that because I like like trying to accomplish something visually or playing or writing or whatever while Mm -hmm. listening to something. But I have been um, listening to tracks while doing my uh, my boxing because I have like the um, boxing to the music kind of setup, you know, for Mm -hmm. exercise and stuff. So like 
I, that's been my way of getting in my tunes. But yeah, I'm severely lacking in some some uh, some playlist action. So can can uh, we tell people Wooly about how we came this close to having an actual sparring match? Oh oh uh, yeah <laughs> yeah sure right in uh, <laughs> in, in in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> we almost we almost fought in Michigan, bro. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. Um so the way this was revealed to me um and uh, just so just so people are aware, I would say Wooly that um like you're a, you're a bigger dude than I am. Yeah, weight classes exist for a reason. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Um but the way this was revealed to me was that we were in your room and you like pulled back a layer of your suitcase and there were four boxing gloves there. <laughs> and you were and you were just like you ready? <laughs> you ready? <laughs> so, you oh. know. Yeah. Now, uh, unfortunately, the way the weekend worked out, we never actually got to make it to did a not ring. Have time. But no, do you remember my no. stipulation? What was it? We can box. You got to grapple. Oh, I got to roll, right? Yeah. I have to roll. Yeah, and I yeah, still yeah. I still want to make that happen. Oh, god damn. Do you take it to the ground? Mm-hmm, pull guard mm-hmm. what the oh, fuck am yeah. i gonna do what am i like <laughs> land oh yeah 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 okay i'll One tell you what you're gonna do woolly you're gonna snap nap or tap is that what it's called <laughs> snap nap or tap <laughs> damn is that on the front of a fucking affliction jersey or whatever or, or i'm i'm sure I'm, I'm i'm sure it's something <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's something that sounds like merch okay mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um all right number nine for me um baby i want to know your name the name is bomb rush cyberfunk oh okay okay i know must you must be aware you must i am aware aware. i am aware so bomb rush cyberfunk is basically um for years fans of jet set radio and jet set radio future like myself have been basically screaming at the heavens and sega looked down and went no Except up until this week, but regardless, um, Team Reptile. Yeah, the what folks a fucking, behind. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Whole other Wild. thing. Whole other Wild. thing. Wild. <laughs> but Team Reptile, the folks behind Lethal League and Lethal League Blaze, basically went fuck it. I'll do it myself. And they then built Jet Set Radio at home. But this time, you can uh, you can skateboard. You can ride your bike. Or you can put on the, the, the skates as well. Um, they got Hideki Naganuma, a.k.a. DJ Skank Funk, the original himself, to do some tracks on the music. Uh, they got uh, the likes of Too Mellow, who uh, was able to put the track I Wanna Know, which has a little cameo by yours truly in it. So I am Aww. canonically in the video game. I think you're canonically you know? in that video game more than once, right? Well, no. So the the thing you see in my playthrough over on Wooly Versus is a um, Quiet Viking. Uh, a fan made an awesome model of me and Reggie that we then modded into the game. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that that is just a modded model of us, and it looks fucking incredible. And so we were able to play as ourselves. But did we in the mu- were, did we meet Quiet Viking? Um, we did, and he was uh, he was quiet. <laughs> he yeah, was yeah, yeah. very quiet, very talented, right? Very talented, exactly, and and so he was able to do this sick ass like version of me and Reggie in in uh, Jet Set Radio style, you know. So shout outs to Quiet, mm-hmm. um, and so yeah, like we 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 played through that. Um, it is it is again. I've wanted Jet Set Radio brought back with like quality of life improvements, and you know, Team Reptile they they really did it. Um, so but but yeah, I was gonna say in, in, if you listen to the track, I want to know. Uh, you listen out for the y- 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 yeah, and that's that's me. Hell um, yeah! Oh, but it's just a fun character-driven uh, story. It's a fun world. You get to see things that r- are reminding you of Tokyo Toe, and you're getting to see, you know, like some of the Shibuya Station things and all that. But um, it has like the best version of the graffiti system because Jet Set Radio had like uh, a series of like half circles and, and full 360s that were kind of you know a little awkward and you were getting chased by the cops and stuff and you're trying to spray and it was like okay but the, the but the mini game is there because you need to do your spray paint um so, and then Jet okay. Set Radio Future got rid of it entirely and just made it like tap the button spray move 
So, so I, like, oh. I have I have a question with Jet Set Radio. One thing yeah. I frequently and like I I am a huge fan of the aesthetic and sound of Jet Set Radio. I don't think I've ever actually played the game, oh. but um, I love I love a lot of the character designs as well. So sick. Yeah, but classics. something I hear from people nowadays, and maybe this is like one of those video essay hot takes that is just popular, but um. I have heard from multiple people and people I would like have fairly, yeah, this person knows what's up, say like kind of like Jet Set Radio was always an awesome aesthetic and never a super good game. Now, I'm not trying to start nothing. I'm just curious as to your take. This is not a controversial opinion. Those games okay. are chock rife full with jank. Okay. They're okay. That's, a, that's, that's all I want to know. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Absolutely. It's always been aesthetic uh uh like through the roof music through the roof style and all of that and the general flow of gameplay is uh is fun but controlling it there's been it's rough in some situations jumping has always felt kind of awkward in some cases floaty is good right switching from one track to the other is good mm -hmm. but there'd be times where like you, you wanted control in a way that it couldn't give it to you sometimes the snapping from one rail to another wouldn't be perfect and sometimes it asked things of you that were way too much given how imprecise the controls were fighting certain bosses and not falling off death rails in like a very ac a very tight circle you know um it's like a game that's like not super made for a boss fight, but they put you one in anyways, you know? So I, I kind of call this the Tenchu 3 problem. Tenchu mm. 3 for the PlayStation 2 is one of the best games of all time hidden in one of the jankiest games of all time. <laughs> okay. You know, and it's, yeah, the, the yeah, shit yeah. that's awesome about that game is fucking incredible. It's just buried under so much jank and so much like you hurling a shuriken that comes within one meter of a wall and hits into it in nothing. And it's like, Ugh. if you can put up with the garbage, there's there's gold under that under that hill of Ugh. nothing. On yep. paper, you know? Yeah, so... so but it's awesome that, ba that Bomb Rush actually, like, brings the cool shit forward. Addresses a lot of that. It, it, it like, giving you, like, wall running and, like, the boost button in particular, you know, um, just works really well. Um, and, like, it's not 100% perfect, but, like, I, I do enjoy most of what it's doing i think like there's like like the combat system is not perfect as well and it could really benefit from like a lock-on it could also benefit from like um, a map that like pointed out where certain like shortcut places were but like what's really fun is like the world the way the whole ui is presented is you pull out your nokia flip phone and like you're while you're skating you're like scrolling through you're reading messages you're checking graffiti tags you can take a selfie of yourself in the while upside down posing in the middle of the city oh, you know okay yeah um and yeah, it make the spray painting really, really fun. Like you just get to do a series of lines and that and create a pattern, and it's fantastic. So yeah, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk is uh, something the Jet Set Radio fans have been waiting for. Um, also, it features profound body horror, so uh, unexpected. Okay, you know, I don't know that I needed a skate, a, a rollerblading body horror game, but yeah. sign me up. There, yeah, but it's a lot of fun. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Um, number nine. I am surprised by this one just because I was not a fan. Well, no, I liked the original Scott Pilgrim. Eh. But do you ever consume a piece of media and you're like, this is this is pretty cool. And everyone around you is losing their mind. Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. to me was what experiencing Scott Pilgrim in the mid 2000s was going to be like. I was like, yeah, I really like how this guy draws. Um, I don't know about like. It's okay, other than that. Um, and then I felt like I watched half of Reddit become, like, Scott Pilgrim. Um, Scott Pilds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, who they just started acting like that. Like, I think that had a profound effect on, like, men online. I don't know. Um, I thought it was cool. I thought it was fine. Uh, I really liked. I, I liked his his follow up comment sec seconds better, and mm. I kind of loved Scott Pilgrim takes off. 
Yeah. The Netflix yeah. animation. I had such a great time with this. One of my favorite looking shows all year. Like, really beautiful, simple drawings drawn so, so well and then composited to absolute fucking perfection, which is, like, really ambitious storyboarding and um, kind of taking... So, like, for people who don't know, I can't really convey what's cool about this without giving a yeah. episode one, two spoiler. This is yeah. not an adaptation. It's a rebuild. And I think as a people, as a species... We may perhaps be plummeting towards rebuild fatigue, but this was fucking great. I mm-hmm. really, really appreciate it. It shifts the tone from like Scott Pilgrim defeating Ramona Flowers' seven evil ex-boyfriends to kind of like Ramona herself acknowledging that she's a bit of a shitty person and like coming to terms and making peace with those same seven evil ex-boyfriends. And I, I I loved it. I thought it was so, so good. I thought the like things that had to say about the original were so smart. And like mm-hmm. it it walked this perfect line between fan service and actually expanding on those original ideas. Absolutely. And, like yeah. if, now I mean now that the cat's out of the bag, like yeah, I went in, I've for years wanted a perfect adaptation. And then I started getting it and I was like, oh, finally, that's awesome. And then when they swerved, I was like, huh. But then it won me over because I was just like, oh, it's so much nice. It's so nice to spend more time with these characters to get little like, again, fan service moments of them interacting with each other. Lucas Lee, dude. Lucas Lee. Absolutely. And, and, you know, Matthew Patel. uh, Oh, so much more spotlight as well. I thought that the episode with Ramona and her ex-girlfriend specifically i thought was really sweet really Mm -hmm. really sweet and Um, of course just also the fact that it's a best of where you get like the voice actors from the live action film you get the brian leo malley art style you get the music of anna managuchi from the game you get the pixel art of paul robertson also from the game like mm -hmm. just an all-star fucking melange katamari of quality yeah. coming together. It, it, it's one know? of those things where I really think it was the best possible result for a project like this. And like um, the decision to do the reboot came from Brian Leo or the, the rebuild came from Brian Leo Malley. And I remember I read an interview with him and he referred to uh, the idea of just doing Scott Pilgrim again as like death. And actually, right. I really I respect the fuck out of that. Right, you know, yeah. I really do, because he could have the, the original comic could have gotten this treatment and everyone would have been fine with it. And I think yeah. this is, and like this did piss some people off and I understand that too. But to me, I thought it was awesome. And I really, it's been really 20 years. It. You're allowed to move forward with it. And I think yep. I, 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 if anything, what would have mitigated it would have been just like perhaps Netflix marketing it in a way that would uh, imply that a little more than not at all. Because Brian Lee uh, in interviews did like give that detail openly beforehand mm-hmm. But like, yeah, some of that, the main negativity was like people expecting one thing and getting another and the hoodwink was not what uh, what they wanted. But what, yeah. what we got was certainly pays off. And, and uh, the the, you know, the, the, the final boss <laughs> is is fantastic. I, I want I wanted to say that without saying it. And I guess that's as close we're going to get. But that yeah. whole final episode just so raw, perfect. Yeah. yeah, good stuff. I agree. I totally agree. Um, all right. So for me coming in next would be, uh, not much of a surprise for anyone who's, you know, been, uh, all the way in, but Baldur's Gate three is oh, cleaning okay. up for good reason. Now, uh, the you only see that reason- you see that you see that game awards more like Baldur's sweep. <laughs> <laughs> you, did, you did it. You got it in there. Um, no, the only reason why this is not coming in higher is my fault, really. It's because I haven't beaten it yet, right? But it's also massively, massively long, all-encompassing. It's just a humongous game. Um, you know what, the- Wooly? What I'm going to say is that Baldur's Gate 3 is actually coming further up my list. Would okay. you like to save a full discussion of it till then? Okay. All right. Yeah, we, then we, let's we, do it. Okay, cool, cool. Um, okay, coming next on my list is the movie Saltburn. This is number eight on my list. Mm. Um, so there is an Irish actor called Barry Keoghan. Um, I might have that wrong. I'm not exceptional with names. But okay. um, he was in another film called Killing of a Sacred Deer. And he is an incredibly unsettling little man 
And the whole idea behind killing of a sacred deer is without giving too much away, it's about this little boy, Barry Keoghan, emotionally devouring a family. Hmm. Okay. This movie is about the exact same thing in very different circumstances. And I love the idea that this actor has been typecast for just fucking destroying families. <laughs> um, it is a really beautiful and unhinged movie about this young dude. And he gets accepted into this like, um, to call them like a rich family does not like, this is a level of wealth that, you know, regular people never come in contact like this is okay. the this is the family with generational wealth this yeah. is this is the family with the vineyard in you know every corner of the globe and it's okay. him looking into this life and deciding he wants it and what gradually unfolds is this really incredible mix of like a psychological horror, a teenage coming of age movie, a comedy, and it all works so well together. This movie was two and a half hours, it not a single wasted second in the whole thing, and I I absolutely loved it. The cl- the cast were fucking incredible, and it just it's one of those movies where I was so glad I saw it in the cinema, and okay. really such a strong recommendation on Saltburn. Um, it's comedic, right? Or is this it's played seriously? It, 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 it's laugh out loud, hilarious in parts. It is some of the most disturbing shit I have ever seen <laughs> okay. in other parts. Cool. Uh, cool it's cool. excellent. It, I, it just it it runs the gambit of emotions. Like it will make you feel everything, and it does all of them great. Okay. Um, it comes to my attention that we are probably going to start running into some heavy overlap, probably mm-hmm. starting here on out. Um, so I guess we can either, yeah, discuss whatever gets dropped first or second, depending on how high up the list it goes, because I would be surprised if this were not on yours. But for me, coming in at number seven here is Pluto. Pluto was actually in my honorable mentions that I cut for the sake of time. But yeah, Fair enough. Pl- I, and also, I haven't finished it, but Pluto, awesome. Pluto is goddamn excellent. Um, it is uh, on Netflix, the anime um, by Urasawa, and um, it is it is a, a, an arc of Astro Boy adapted and Urasawa fied. I, I'll say. Um, okay. And uh, it is just yeah, a really like. I, how far did you get? So I'm on episode four. Okay, okay, okay. So they're, 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 those episodes are, are big boys. They're very big boys. Each volume of the manga is a full episode. So it's eight episodes, uh, eight volumes. Is right. how it, and that's why they're so dense, right? Um, we have basically taken the world of Astro Boy and like we're, we're, we're moving past the Asimov level discussions of like whether robots uh, uh, count as people or anything like that. It, it forces you to accept that artificial life is precious. We're, it's not even about that debate. Now we're we're fully we're into discussing whether or not like negative emotions should be cherished data, just like we cherish positive emotions, and um, we're discussing the ramifications of the post second Gulf war invasion of Iraq and the deposal of Saddam Hussein <laughs> were, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's fucking just, and we're also like revisiting things where if you are a fan of monster or of 20th century boys, right. You know, the classic, um, tired, middle-aged, long haired Japanese man in a trench coat that Urasawa always goes back to. And, that character is is absolutely here in this setting as well, or at least that archetype. Um, and it's just a uh, an awesome collection of like these these uh, uh, characters that are. If you're familiar with Astro Boy, like you're, it's fun to see them in this world. And if you're not familiar, it's still an excellent story. You follow a um, you know Blade Runner esque like uh, a middle aged detective as he's solving the case, um, but. Little things about, you know, uh, 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 the setting that I particularly love in all of Urasawa's work is that characters are not just default, gorgeous anime, Bishonen and Bisenen, 
by like automatically. No, people Every, have people have gels. They have faces. They have yeah. noses. They have flaws. There's people. Some people are ugly. Some people are normal. It's just. It's a. You know what I mean? It's a real like de deliberate thing, a choice with the art style, and it makes it so much more impactful and important when someone does show up with perfect long hair and a perfect nose and big anime eyes. That is like a Bishonen style character. It's like that's making a statement. Like this mm -hmm. person is gorgeous, and everyone's gonna treat you that way. You know. Um, I uh, I yeah I just I really loved it. It's a it's a grittier look at the world of Astro Boy, but it's not an edgier one, you know. No, no, um, and it's it's it, and you know it's funny, Willie, as well, because like I am actually someone, and this was a we'll say an outrage on my Discord earlier this year. I have a channel on my Discord called the Review Hole where I review different shit, and um, I reviewed Monster, the anime for Monster, mm. and I gotta say. Didn't really like it very much. Oh, yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Okay. And I understand. No, like I didn't hate it. I thought it was decent. But I understand what an extreme minority I am at that. And I've also given Twenty First Century Boys a shot, and it didn't really click with me. Damn. Okay. This this did. This okay. from episode one. I was like, oh, I love this. This is awesome. I think this okay. detective. The detective has a real like. There's something just likable about him. Like, he kind of mm -hmm. has just a kind of charisma. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And then I think there's a scene in episode two, maybe, where he visits, like, a really fucked up robot in prison. Mm -hmm. Well, he, you, you, you know I do love my, my oh, villain Lee. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Brow. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. So, I yeah. mean, I, I, and I'll say that I love something whenever I'm watching a show and it, like, cuts away at some moment to another story that has you going like, did I accidentally skip an episode? What's happening? And mm -hmm. it's like, no, 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 no. We're now just spending some time over here, right? Um, let's take a look at this piano for a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? And uh, like, what, what, I, I love the feeling. This was every season of The Wire for me. It's like, oh, why the fuck are we? Can we not just get back to the, and mm -hmm. then by the time, by the time you're done, oh, no, I don't want to leave. <laughs> exactly. It's exactly that. So, um, yeah, Pluto is is just a glowing recommend on that. I, I fucking loved it. And um, again, just it's it's like Astro Boy is 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 where the story is taken from. But it's not necessarily about him. We're going to pan the camera over here to focus on what the fuck is happening mm -hmm. in this bunker where someone just got bombed by the military. Let's tell that story. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah okay number seven for the 2023 best collection john side is not a thing it is a person oh oh it's you woolly oh it's <laughs> look, look, all I'm saying, Wooly, is if you get started right now, 2024, baby. <laughs> oh, god damn it. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you about a young man named Rin Narita. Okay. Okay. So, let me start by telling you about another young man called Shota Umino. Okay. Shota Umino, Wooly is the undisputed future of New Japan Pro Wrestling. He is their next ace. He is their next top guy. It is an inevitability. This dude, he has so much natural charisma. He's an incredible wrestler. He has fucking flair for days. He comes out in these crazy massive jackets and he walks out through the crowd and everyone loses their fucking mind. And then he gets in the ring and he has the most exciting explosive wrestling matches you can imagine his um his finish he has a signature move like ignition and all this kind of stuff he's like a wrestler who's on fire all the time he is incredible okay. um he is he's the future of new japan and he's not who i want to talk about mm -hmm. because shota umino is a is right now a rookie wrestler in new japan he's a relative newcomer but he came up with another wrestler 
and the other wrestler is Rin Narita. Rin Narita is the total opposite of Shota. He comes out to generic music. He walks slowly to the ring. He wears nothing but just black trunks and black boots. His special moves don't have names. They are called... <laughs> They are called Narita Special 1, Narita oh, Special 2, Narita wow. Special 3. Wow. He is the most forgettable wrestler in the fucking world. Wow. Except for the fact that when that bell rings, that fucking dude is a technical marvel who will yeah. carve stories that make you cry. There are Shawn Michaels guys and there are Bret Hart guys. Mm -hmm. Narita is the Bret Hart to Umino's Shawn Michaels, okay? And he, I got my introduction to this guy in the G1 tournament. So the G1 tournament is an annual tournament in New Japan. And it's a round robin style tournament, okay? And Shota Umino and um, Rin Narita are in the same block, okay? Rin Narita has all these big, or, or Umino has all these big matches, gets some big wins, does like, you know, he doesn't win the block, but he does well for a newcomer. But Narita fucking crashes and burns. He loses every single one of his matches, except a match against Umino, which is a draw. And so he goes into his final match fucking bottoming out this is a disaster okay and it's a problem because the person he's fighting is called kaito kiyomiya and kiyomiya is kind of special because kiyomiya is on loan from um noah a different wrestling organization okay and he's like if not their ace one of their top guys and there is no way in hell that pro, that pro wrestling Noah are going to let one of their top guys lose to a rookie like Narita. Right, right, it's right. Just, it's just impossible. Like, that's not how wrestling works. And you start watching this match and you start fucking believing. <laughs> and the match has a 20-minute time limit, right? And as the seconds start... And it's like, okay, five minutes left. Three minutes left. Two minutes left. Mm. One minute left. I will not reveal here what mm -hmm. happens, but this was some of the most hard clutching shit wow. I have experienced all year. It is not my favorite wrestling match of the year. People will be able to find that out in my favorite things video, which I think by the time this podcast went up should have gone out. But in terms of a young wrestler making me stand up and take fucking notice Rin Narita, as far as I'm concerned, is the future Vegeta of New Japan. Okay. And like, it's... I am looking forward into the future and I am saying Wrestle Kingdom main event, Shota Umino versus Rin Narita. I want to see this one day. So what you're describing to me sounds like the NFL's Barry Sanders of wrestling. Um... In in the NFL, there's a there's a player uh, back in the day named Barry Sanders. He was a running back for the Detroit Lions, uh, you know, uh, classic now. And um, he was in an era of like characters like Deion Sanders and Emmett Smith and these people that were just like celebrating, popping off, doing amazing things. He would take the ball, run to the end zone, turn around, hand it to the referee, and just walk back to his position. Right. That is this guy. That he is this would guy. Just. Absolutely, like, no, nothing, no circumstance, no pop, just played the game, did his job, you know, and, like, was unstoppable the so, moment the ball snapped. He would cut people left and right in such a way that it looked like he was teleporting across the field, but there was not an ounce of just anything. He just, he showed up to do it to work, hands the ball over, goes back to the locker room. All right, so punch it out. I, w I watched every match of his in the G1, and I might be misremembering this, but I'm pretty sure at one point one of the commentators said that he requested to have no entrance music because it is unnecessary. Unbelievable. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. You know, so that's that's that dude. <laughs> I'm here to work. What are we doing? Come on, guys. Yep. You know? <laughs> okay. So okay. That is my number um, six, I believe. All right. Um, number six for me. 
is uh, the journey that we took across the Spider-Verse. I thought you were going to say the journey that we took to too many games, Willie. Well, if you start working on it from now, maybe by <laughs> next year. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, Across the Spider-Verse was fucking great. Um, I don't know. Um, yo, you've, yeah, you've seen it. Or, oh, yeah. And it? like, it, it's an exceptional movie. Except, yeah. I have some thoughts, but you, you, okay. you go first. Um, I just like after the first one i really i really loved what they did and i was like um you know i thought awesome like beautiful uh, animation and art style and um um the 3d is re- very lively and the things that uh i loved that we saw in uh the last wish in puss in boots that style of like you know the frame rate and and the action as i feel like spider verse really kind of coined that style and pushed it you oh know? oh i mean the animation industry in cro in, like owes an incredible debt to the Spider-Verse because it basically made everyone evolve through pure shame. Right, right. Like, it's allowed to not be 60 frames per second. It's okay, right? You, we can do creative things. Um, the uh, but, so I, but the thing about it is that by doing a multiverse story, you're like, okay, are, are, we, are we done yet? Like, we're going, you know, this is a well that we've visited many times. How do you keep it interesting, you know? And... Um, they did so by just having characters that were compelling and relatable and mm-hmm. having, you know, stories and and, and per- parental conversations that are just like, damn, you feel that shit, you know? Um, the, 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 the paradigm shift I felt watching this movie of just the team that made, you know, the original Spider-Verse pushing it to their limits here and um, creating just like every scene where characters are just talking or people are just standing in rooms having moments. It's still gorgeous. Like the the colors exploding around each character as they, you know, say what they have to say and doing things like. I, I think it's, it's really not an understatement to say that this is close to, if not the the most visually ambitious animated movie of all time. Exactly. Exactly. Now, I think there's, there's there's ways you could qualify that, like with the limitations people had to put up in the in the past, like the Beauty and the Beast, uh, like ballroom scene and stuff like that mm-hmm. but i think on a creative level i don't think i've ever seen anything that's close to as ambitious as this like the no. the changes in medium the way different characters are animated in different ways it's fucking insane and we're now in a world where like toy story is not that impressive anymore we've moved into cg movies 3d movies as a standard delivery for you know kids movies and such and like it, not as not there's not much that's pushing it you know um, it really feels like they, they you know, challenged themselves and, and just created something that was like unlike anything we've ever seen with this. And um, I, uh, I also – and just going in, I, the fact that like, again, we took material that I was worried about, Spider-Verse, multiverses and stuff. And it, it was just so much fun to hang out with, uh, you know, um, Spider-Punk and Spider-Man India. Um, I'm a huge mark for, for Scarlet Spider. So Ben Riley getting thrown under the bus was fucking fantastic. I that loved was it. awesome. So I good. loved all of so that. Good. Yeah, yeah. And, and, um, and I think and like the the incredibly effective villain in that game. In that absolutely, uh, movie. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two thousand ninety nine is 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 getting rap. You know, and yeah. and I just feel that like um, it definitely as we got to the middle of that and I, or we got to the end of it and I was like, oh, there's so much more to tell here. And there's like, yeah, there's more story, and that's why it's a trilogy. And I was like, okay, fair enough. You've mm-hmm. I, I, you've earned that, and, and I'm, yeah, and I'm excited I, to see I, the conclusion. I did not have a problem with that at all. And, no. Um, I think for me, one thing I did feel like was I felt like the first Spider-Verse, in a lot of ways, was quite a simple story, and I thought that really worked for it. And I thought this story was obviously, conceptually, so much more insanely ambitious that... Mm-hmm. There were parts of the story that didn't work as well for me. Like, I think it's a much messier movie than the first movie. Um, But I get it. Like, and I see why that is. I think maybe it's just a kind of personal preference thing for me where I think I like a tighter narrative. And I didn't think this was always the tightest. But you don't get a thousand Spider-Men chasing a (laughs) Spider-Man with a simple narrative, right? Yeah, yeah, and 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 I think that it's um 
of all the different Spider-Man related things happening right now, this is my favorite. This is um, the, the most interesting to me. And I, oh, I'm, I easily by far, by far. Yeah. And, I, and I'm just I'm also just I'm still like I was I felt it the first time and I'm still feeling just happy that the world finally knows who Miles Morales is. You know, it's something I've wanted them to like get to for a while. And it's finally a thing and everyone can see like this character's like got charm and his own life that is interesting and a story to follow that uh, uh, is is just awesome, you know, and and. Um. It, yeah, he got a spotlight, and he and he and he's he's currently yeah. like living. The amount it. of the the amount of like young black dudes I've seen doing like a Miles Morales cosplay at cons is like fuck yeah, like it's fucking you, sick. Yo, you know, yo, rocking the Jays, or if you're doing the game version, rocking the Tims. Like, I mean, there's, I mean, so the reason why I like Scarlet Spider is because it's my first introduction to Spider Man wearing streetwear over top. Right. Mm -hmm. So that look is forever just goaded to me. It, the drip is immaculate. And so like that's what it's all about here, too, as well. And I'm, I'm, I'm all about it. Um, my only thing is just please make Beyond the Spider-Verse without destroying any artists in the process. Please, please. That's yeah. This yeah, is what we sure. need in the world is, is this type of creative project, this type of energy. But we don't need these like animators getting burnt the fuck out and impossible demands on behalf of the studios and everything like that so um it, I, it, it has to be mentioned you know because i came out of that going i can't believe what this team did oh my god these are god tier animators how did they do it and the answer is like by shaving off time on the fucking death note clock above their heads you know so um that's it that's it What's what's the, isn't what's that weapon in uh, Chainsaw Man that you can use and it knocks uh, it knocks years off your life? Oh yeah 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 exactly. The cursed right. sword. Yep yep. Mm -hmm. um, yeah okay. Uh, I made a mistake. This is actually my number six. Um, oh. It's it it, it it'll all be fine. But <clears throat> okay. I guess continuing the theme once again of animated 3D movies that just went so much incredibly harder than anything anyone could have predicted. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. Oh, I haven't seen it. Okay. I'm pretty sure I can sell this to you in one sentence. Okay. They play M.O.P.'s anti-up twice. Ah! <laughs> anti-up, got that fool. Anti-up, got that fool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Get up all those knew, goddamn diamonds. They knew exactly what they were doing with this movie, and it is fucking awesome. It is so good. Um, visually, maybe one of my favorite movies of all time. It is okay. absolutely stunning. It is just this fucking searing neon glazed New York filled with all these like disgusting misshapen characters that look absolutely incredible um and it is it is so gorgeous like i cannot stress how beautiful this looks i would say spider-verse is like a more ambitious movie and like has mm -hmm. more shit going on but in terms of just like insane art direction of a singular style Mm -hmm. I loved Mutant Mayhem so much. And um, and look, I've been I've been a I've been a Turtles mark for a long time. I got this uh I, I got this this beautiful beautiful slash action figure. There he is. Yep, yeah. Turtles uh, a lot in of, time. A lot of people don't know who Slash is, but let me tell you, motherfucker, he's back from Dimension X. Um, <laughs> and I I, I, I like blah, 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 blah. Dude. Yeah. We could do a whole fucking podcast on Turtles. <laughs> I don't think we've ever talked about it, have we? I don't think so, no. Okay, because that's my f top three scrolling beat em up. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. you could throw Streets of Rage 2 and Streets of Rage Remix in there, but yeah. Um, I mean, when it comes to this movie, so I haven't seen it, but the thing that I did see that I felt was just like so cool was that the the Ninja Turtles are actually teenagers. It's a bunch of kids and like, they're just hanging out in a room talking. And like, when you hear their, I heard their voices and I heard them kind of just like bantering and it just sounded like, like, no. This is so, okay. That's, that's what I loved about this movie. Like I love the turtles. I think the turtles are awesome. It's such a fucking weird, cool thing. This is the first time that they've ever felt like 
young teenagers to me. Yeah. You know, like yeah. really young and specifically young teenage boys. And what I loved about it was because I think media has a real tendency to show young teenage boys as just absolute fucking nightmare creatures. Just these really like awful insensitive uncaring mm -hmm. creatures and they can be that don't get me wrong like they can be that i get it but there's also like you know a lot of fucking just young little dudes trying to trying to make it you know just trying yeah, to figure yeah, shit yeah. out who aren't like mean and who aren't cruel and who do give a shit about their friends and who are decent human beings and that is absolutely what these characters okay were. they because they are feels they, there's like there's no point where they all like fight and hate each other they're all just like really supportive and really care mm -hmm. about each other and it's so fucking cool to see you right because yeah because it feels like like yeah like the, you know like the whole kids are hormonal and they're gonna get all angry and they're gonna be like fuck you dad you know and i yeah. mean like you know, the teenage group years and, and such you know but i also feel that like almost as a result of that it's like you you or or in retrospect you look at ninja turtles most of the time and they're teenagers in the same sense that jotaro kujo is a teenager you yeah. know like they're just jacked buffed michael bay yada yada does it yeah like fucking you know these are like, squishy little fellas who happen to know ninjutsu that's great that's great um and like look there's a lot i could say about it like the voice acting is phenomenal um the a, an amazing rendition of april o'neill and look, I, I people are annoyed over it because she's she's not Boob April anymore. And like, uh, the fantastic news is that Boob April exists everywhere online. I can recommend you some subreddits. It'll be fine. This April fucking rules. Okay. Um, and it's voiced by the girl from the Bear. Um, I'm blanking on her name, but she does. She is so funny, and she knocks it out of the park. And um, just I really. I, I, I've seen at the box office this movie did well, but I think especially among like our peers and our generation, Wooly, I think people slept on this movie and that's a part of why it's so high on this list. Okay, but, okay. you know, I could have given Puss in Boots this spot. I could have given Spider-Verse this spot. I gave it this movie because and I think it deserves it. I think it's okay. not necessarily better, but just it deserves to be talked about in the same breath as those movies. Well, I'm I'm glad that like the emotional the, the emotional aspect and the relationship between the characters is what shines here because it feels like a smart thing or the right thing to focus on given that like the last entry before um Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles just did full on Gurren Lagan insanity that was so hype and over the top and amazing. So the action is taken care of. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like there's not much else to be said about like how how hard and over and hype the action can get. But okay, um, here's here's how hard they are thinking about these characters. It is a plot point that Donatello is into Attack on Titan. That's so cool. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Yeah. Yep. So that's it. Like, like you know, action, we've got it. There's a version of this story and these turtles that are doing Giga Drill Breakers. What's mm -hmm. happening with the with the, the, the personalities? Absolutely. And don't, don't get me wrong. The action in this rules, but it's like fighting a bunch of guys in a bar action, not right. Giga Drill Breakers. But yeah, really great yeah. film. And I would say like a super cozy family watch if you want something to watch with like the family over Christmas or something like that. Uh, you know. It's just hard to imagine anyone having a bad time with this movie. Twice, you say. Twice. Mm -hmm. Bust a rhyme now. MOP <laughs> now. What you want now? What you yep. want now? Uh, yeah. What you want now? What you want now? Uh, uh, uh. Uh, one of one of the unquestionable yeah. great one of the unquestionable greatest songs of all time. Could we agree so on that? So good. Just I had a remix of Marvel vs. Capcom 2 that had it playing in one of the backgrounds. Oh, oof. You can't okay, get yeah. more hype yeah. than playing no, Marvel no. with Annie up behind it, bro. You can't. I no, no. dare you, you to try. <laughs> I, I, I refuse to. It would be a waste of both our times. And all so right. yeah, that that is my number six. Okay. Coming in at number five on the woolly side of the best collection is Armored Core 6. Oh, okay. So, uh, similar to the uh, my previous statement on Baldur's Gate, this could be higher if not for the fact that I have not finished yet. And that is my fault entirely. But what it has done so far has provided me with just... I mean, look, I'm not everyone. If you know anything about me, you know, I love me a good robot. 
I'm a fan of of a mecha or two, and um, I am also, as a fan of mecha, therefore, in the same breath, criminally uh, unfamiliar with Armored Core. Um, Armored Core games, I just... I had uh, my roommate was super in and showed me a lot of the cool stuff back in the day. And like, but just I've as I've been like into a lot and watching a, a lot of mech stuff, I just didn't uh, uh, play uh, Armored Core. And so this is an experience I'm having that is really just like the vibes of Sunday morning building your gunpla and painting mm. it. And then just like putting, you know, like getting your fuck the paint decals, you get you go uh, fuck the the sticker decals, get your paint apps going, pose it, you know, and then sortie that shit into the fucking field and try to uh, uh, take on, you know, giant uh, um, enemies that are fifteen times bigger than you, you know. Um, it's so cool to just have the feeling of like, okay, you tinker under the hood like you're like a car in your uncle's garage type of thing, you know, and then you you tweak it. And you and you and you, you go into the field and, and play. And um when you're moving around, when you're slashing, when you're pile bunking, shooting, gatling gunning, it really feels like you are that like mecha pilot that is dodging an Atano circus of missiles that fly into the corner. You know what I mean? You get to live those fantasies out. Um the one in particular where like the Gundam dashes up to a, a mass produced suit slash slash and then boost away, you know, you get to like relive though. You get to have those mm. moments where you're fully in control. And um, I, I just, uh, yeah, I, I love the fact that all of that comes with just a really fun build your parts, detail them as you want to. And then from soft who, you know, as we know with souls games, you can spend as much or as little time going hard on your build, on your scaling, on your armors and weapons and such. And all of that here is just, it's there for you to explore. But, um, to some degree, uh, you can also just kind of like, like, I want to make my, my arm red. Cause I want a one arm that looks like it stands out on the build. Like it got ripped off and replaced. So that's what I'm going to do, you know? Um, yeah, it's just it's been fucking phenomenal so far. Um it, I really also love that like as far as the story is going, the missions are doing a really good job at like putting these different settings up against you and like establishing these characters and like it has such amazing moments, you know. Um there's like there's you know one one like mission that you that goes you go through is basically you're like there is a bright-eyed, burning heart protagonist that got in the robot to save the day. And he's a target. And, and you, you just kill him. And then you get paid and you go back to base. <laughs> Stone cold. Holy shit. And that's it. That dude could have been the protagonist of his own anime. But that's not what the story is about. Goodbye. We're doing our jobs. We're getting paid. We're mercs. And wow. the corpse... Have the check is in the mail, you know, and mm. it's like it's just uh, it's incredible. Um, when this mo- when when the when the game decides to go hard on you, the moments it delivers have been nine point on the Richter scale, you know, like like the chapter bosses in particular are just these visual and gameplay marvels that test your limits, pushes you to the extremes of your ability to dodge and boost and you know maximize your efficiency. Like it demands a lot of you in again from soft style. And, um, I just, yeah, I, I love, I love everything about it so far. Um, I, it, Armored Core 6, if you love yourself some robots and a good challenge, and if you love just playing with your toys, uh, it's great. I, so I have, I have put hands on. I would say I am like, I am open to the idea of robots. Um, and I, God, this game feels good. Like, oh, just moving around in those mechs feels phenomenal. Yeah. Um, I, I I can't say like it's going to be 100% my thing. I kind of need to spend a bit more time with it. But yeah, like I, I, I played enough of it to be like, yeah, there's shit here. Okay. There's shit here. You know? I would I would if there's if there's ever a little like I'm feeling this out. I want to know if it's my thing. I challenge that person to equip a pile bunker, stagger an enemy and fully charge the pile bunker and deliver it. 
I full think, payload and I think see if something if, if, in the back of your brain doesn't just ignite. <laughs> I, fe I feel like when I was playing it, there was a certain sense of like, this is lighting up some of the same neurons as Vanquish. Oh, the synapses are going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So interesting, interesting. Well, that's Sorry, the same, the same as... Vanquish. Vanquish. Assault boosting. Assault okay. boosting feels like Vanquish bo boosting on the ground. Absolutely. Okay. Best Collection 2023, John Side, number five. Wooly, I know this is a game you have played. It's Slay the Princess. Ah, yes. Yep. Yes. Um, I beat this game on stream recently. I was never so happy to be gaslit by a video game. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, okay. So for people who aren't familiar, this is a kind of semi-visual novel-like game where you wake up in a forest, you don't know who you are, you don't know why you're there. Um, you hear the voice of a narrator in your head and he says you need to go to the cabin, pick up the knife in the cabin, go down to the cabin's basement where there is a chained princess and you slay her. That is why you are here. Um, there is a lot about this game that I think people should just discover for themselves. Yes. Um, you get down to the basement. The princess doesn't seem so bad. She doesn't seem like she's someone who's going to end the world. But is she? And that, mm -hmm. like, it just goes from there. And to me, it's such a brilliant concept. And it's a concept that could fall so flat if the dialogue and the writing and the voice acting especially yes. weren't phenomenal, which they all are. And um, I... That fucking princess turned me around and upside down in so many mm -hmm. different ways. And um, I just had such a great time with it. I, I we love are this game. We are fully in the... Uh, uh, we're in the meta-narrative arc, right? Like, yeah. there are many, many stories that are um, flipping the script on its head and doing the unexpected, and thus it's kind of becoming the expected. So... Like, you want to make sure that, like, as you said, if you're going to do these things, you do it in a way that is, like, well thought out and well executed. Mm -hmm. um, and I really felt in this case it was fantastic. The, um, the, 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 and the thing is, too, is that, like, I love how, I don't know how your journeys went, but for me, like, it really, like, finds out what kind of person you are. And then holds a mirror up to you, you know, as you go through it. And I really appreciated how much, like, especially playing it on stream, I got exposed. <laughs> so <laughs> I know? heard about your... Okay, so just to... Like, I don't, I'm not going to peel back too much here, but just say a little more. Mm -hmm. Basically, you do your first run and maybe the princess dies, maybe you die, maybe neither of you die. And then you play it again. And the princess is different mm -hmm. and she may be a little different depending on how your first run went that's all i'll say yes but my god does it go to some fucking wild places yeah did you ever yes. meet did you ever meet the fury i don't think so i but i've, I've heard about woolly bait so oh, I, oh okay so the, <laughs> no the, the woolly bay is the um the adversary oh okay 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 and uh i got to the adversary and you know i, th I think woolly that <laughs> one, one of the things that we have in common <laughs> yes is is mm. that we bo both perhaps are are partial to a certain kind of lady and I got to this girl on stream and immediately thought, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to see. They're going to know. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, hey, look, man. Let's just say this. Like, we play Marissa. Okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'd, yeah. Like, let's let's leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's all we need to say there. But um, look, Slay the Princess, it's fucking, Where you know. Where are you going? Oh, she's so good. I am actually. I I have been main. We'll get to it. That, we'll get that's that, a, that, that, that. That's a story for that, for that, slightly. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that, that. Um. So um, slay the princess. Look, 
it's always cool to see like awesome indie games. This is fucking one of them. I really love this game. It's a visual novel that does not waste your time. There is not like pages and pages and pages of text. All this dialogue hits. It's all impactful. It has some cool shit to say. And it's just a wildly creative piece of horror. And I love that. Wooly, take me to your number four. Okay. I also just want to shout out the art style. And it's very smart use of pencil and concept loose pe uh, um, um, artwork that is like um very time saving and like mm -hmm. narratively appropriate at the same time you know they took an approach that like was something you could replicate quickly but it, it fucking worked for the way the story is told all right also shout out to the voice actor for the princess she showed up in my streams a couple of times yeah she, was super she showed lovely. up in my stream as well super yeah. cool um okay number four is a place wait a minute and that place is portugal <laughs> did I don't you try know. the pastel donatas i did okay they were very good because i'm fucking addicted now Willie. it's a problem there are, there's some around me in the neighborhood and boy, oh boy, can I go get those and I enjoy and enjoy them on a regular oh, basis. There's a place in Dublin called Lisboa that does genuinely like, like it's run by Portuguese people. Yes. Oh, it's so good. Okay. Sorry. Um, continue. So, you know, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Fado music. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Look, me, me and Wooly went to um, Portugal together. Um, our wives were also there. I don't really know what they were. Were they? I don't remember. <laughs> what I am. <laughs> it oh, I was Shelton's great. It was so cool. So so cool. Good we were times. staying in like uh, we we stayed in like this like kind of penthousey place, which was just fucking awesome. Yeah, um, I gotta 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 celebrate, and you know. Yeah, get... we ate so much good food, but the fado music, um. You know when I've shown an anime when one of the protagonists was like, this soul pressure, I, it's, <laughs> it's crushing me. Yes. So we basically went into this, Fado is like this type of Portuguese singing where someone comes out and they sing these just absolute torch songs about heartbreak and misery. And it is like they are belting it out. We we're in this like folk music. Yeah. Yeah. We we're in this like basically chamber designed to refract the music. And this woman came out, and I have never felt anything like it. Like, my bones were trembling under the might of her vocals. And no, yes. no, like, microphone. No. Just her voice. Just trained, carrying through the pressure of it. And, like, just beautiful, beautiful music. And mm -hmm. it's basically, you're that, that's happening. And then, like, yeah, you're and you're having a nice dinner, you know. And, um... It, it you just exactly that's that's exactly it you 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 feel just like everything that's being conveyed you know mm -hmm. um yeah we got to just enjoy uh uh lisbon you know um a trip up to sintra as well checked out some mm -hmm. castle facades yep, yep. and uh had a good time coming down the hill in one of those uh, little carts uh, uh bikes yeah. you know kind of kind of thought we might die but yeah a little didn't. bit good time good yeah, times yeah 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 <laughs> Um, you know, and it was just, uh, it was just a really nice time just walking around town and checking out the, the old statues and the old buildings and, um, you know, creating, uh, 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 boss fights out of the various statues that we saw, <laughs> imagining the lore, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and I think overall, um, uh, yeah, just a, a, it was a very brief time, but it was, it was a beautiful country. And, uh, as such, I would like to, uh, put, the nation of Portugal uh, at number four on my uh, list of uh, best best collection things of the absolutely. year. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, it, it it was it was such a such a good time. Okay, number four on best collection twenty twenty three. John side. We have conveniently John Wick four. Oh, um. I feel like there is a certain S tier of action movie and it's kind of like, for me, it's like, 
Kill Bill. It's like the Matrix Reloaded, but look, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> just fucking chill. I just, it, I can't help that it's one of the best movies of all time. I, it's cool that they made a prequel movie out of it. I, I've never watched it. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Anyway, uh, it's the raid. It's a bunch of other shit. Okay. John Wick Four is in that category. Three hours of the most fucking mind melting action you have ever seen the other john wick movies cool movies i enjoy them good stuff get them the fuck out of here john wick 4 wow is just the wildest shit i have ever seen like willie i cannot stress to you the production values of this movie every scene is fucking insane this is one movie where two bad guys get together and have a little chat That'd be a cool, like, scene by itself. Mm. For some reason, it takes place in a giant horse stable as 40 women with swords on horseback dance around them. <laughs> okay. okay. There is there is a 20 second, 20, 20 minute section of this movie, and it's just people getting hit with hit by cars. Oh, my God. There's another 10 minute section that's just John Wick falling down the stairs. Uh, it's, okay incredible there's a bit where it turns into hotline miami it is just unbelievable it's i was gonna ask as the fourth entry are they going are we going back to the well or are we fine are we digging new ground uh we are hurling a nuke down the well okay okay that is that is that is what's happening uh it's very clearly meant to be the end of this story but i think Hollywood be Hollywooden, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and so I don't know, but I think it's also an extremely beautiful end to this story. It actually ends on quite a powerful message that got me kind of choked up, um, which I was not expecting, but just incredible movie. Uh, really, I went to see it. It was three hours. I was enraptured the entire time. I took my dad to go see it, and he was like, "John, I don't want to go see your three-hour movie." And then we got out, and I was like, "It's pretty rad, though." And he was like, "Oh yeah!" <laughs> uh, so awesome, awesome movie. I I loved it. Fantastic. All right. Um, coming in at number three. Number. We are in the top three. We are of now the best in collection. Twenty twenty-three. Woolly side. There is no turning back. Continuing the trend of animated movies that go way too fucking hard (gasps) the first slam dunk oh i didn't see this and i wanted to so badly dude oh my god i am you know i'm a i'm I'm quite fond of the manga vagabond i'm i'm it's pretty okay i i I have good things it, it, it has come up on occasion yeah, a little more than mid, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, nice, nice try is what I'd say. <laughs> a good attempt, a, a solid good... attempt. Yes, absolutely. Um. <laughs> oh fuck! Imper- so the- uh, you know, look, okay, Wooly. Let's let's be real here. Vag- the, the the manga vagabond. And the most solid B minus you will ever experience. (laughs) Yeah, just apps, just par, you know, does its job, doesn't know, just knows what it's here to do, doesn't do too bad. Yeah, you you know, you know, you know that expression that the world needs uh, garbage men as well. That's, that's it. true. That's that's also true that's of my. It. You know, it's rice on your pl- on your dinner plate. You got to have it there, you know? Yeah. It, it, yeah. <sighs> okay. So <laughs> um uh Takehiko Inoue is the creator of Vagabond and uh also the creator of Slam Dunk, the basketball manga. And uh Slam Dunk for uh one reason or another, I I have never experienced or read so watching this movie was my introduction to, I mean, besides just seeing it and having friends talk about it, my first time actually experiencing Slam Dunk myself. Um, I never felt that any adaptation could do something like Vagabond Justice because I, and I just didn't want to see it because it would lose too much of what it is. And this is the first thing that has convinced me otherwise. Um wow. And the reason why is because it is 
something that also has the same painstaking care and attention to detail that he puts into something like Vagabond, but for basketball. And it's unbelievable. It's so well done. Um, there's moments that you're not convinced aren't like rotoscoped or like, like there's times where you're like, is that not live action? What am I looking at? And it's just, it's just beautifully animated, right? Um, it's so lively. You, know, you, you have, you have no experience with Slam Dunk. No. Um, I, there's a book okay. back in the day, there were some posters in my, in the anime club in college. And I knew I had friends that, that were super in and talked about it and stuff, but like, I never went through it myself. Um, and so, yeah, just, this was a, uh, just what a trip, man. Um, the environmental detail is, is like, again, like uh, unbelievable and it, and it really captures, you know, the, the masterworks that he, that he does by ink brush. Right. So just, I, I can't go enough on the visuals, but the story, the way the characters lives are presented and told to you is just so compelling. Um, it's basically the, the story is you're following one basketball game. And I think it's like the major game of like at least the anime or so. I, I, I'm, I, it's been described or like, or of the manga. It's like a, it's like a me, it's a, a like so, a big so important I, I could be wrong here. Someone told me that it's the last, uh, the last game. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think so. So it's, it's Shohoku versus Sano, right? And as this game is playing out in its entirety, you're cutting to the characters and their stories and their backstories and you're learning about everything. And it's a, it's a sports movie. It's a sports manga, anime. You know what I mean? Like you're doing that bit where it's like, okay, why do we care about these teams? What have they been through? Um, and the, the way it resonates with everyone's like emotional journey is um, it almost reminds me of, um, do you know the, the, you know, Cloud Atlas by any chance? I am um, aware of it. So Cloud Atlas is a, yeah, a book. And it was then adapted into a film by the Wachowskis. And uh, I bring it up because in the book, it's told in, uh, interestingly, reverse chronological order. You go through different eras of time um, uh, to the future, and then you go backwards, right? It's, for, it's interesting. But in the film, what they do is they actually cut in emotional chronological order. So when two characters are experiencing the same emotion, that's when it transitions between them. Right? Oh, whoa. Wow, okay. It's really interesting. Yeah, right? totally. So I bring that up to say that this story is, is has similar moments like that where moments in the game parallel to these things that these characters are experiencing in their lives. And um, as you go through it, it's just, it's just beautiful. You just fucking, you care so much about the struggle of, you know, Ryota, the point guard, the little man who's who's trying to do it, you know? Um, and, and yeah, you're, you're, I, I think, I think this is going to be like a must watch for me over Christmas. I, I just, yeah, I can't yeah. recommend it enough. It, it, it really, and again, like I have no experience with slam dunk whatsoever and I just came out like heart full, you know, um, each of these, and like, it's, each it's, of, it's, it's, it's kind of hopeful as well because it's like, man, if Inoue just keeps going, he might make something like above average at some point. <laughs> It's a great start, you know? Yeah. The, the potential is there for him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. To, just, to crawl out of this that, realm I, of that, mid. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the thing that everyone always says about Anoi, isn't it? It's like, man, when he gets older, he's going to be... Just, yeah. Keep your eyes on that one, you know? Yeah, that's, that's a real, real up-and-comer there. <laughs> one to watch, I'm telling you what. Oh, man. Um... You feel you're watching this a movie and you just you feel uh nostalgic. You feel natsukashi as they say, you know, in the th in the movie for like Okinawa and and the basketball courts and the old trophy room and you know moments with your parents and um it it and it and it just has this masterful thing that it also does too where like um because it's so like it, it, it's there's so much about it that is like reality you know there's so many little moments of like on the court we're going to slow down and you see that thing that sports anime do of course where it's like he's about to do this one move or he's about to do this one trick and they go into the internal monologue here they don't necessarily go into the internal monologue you'll just see everyone pay attention to that guy's foot 
for like two seconds and then the thing happens and you're like whoa fuck whoa shit and it's like yeah that's what skill is like right when someone just outclasses you um and then there's uh, like one of the things i just love um that bring that brings me back to like moments of impact in in vagabond as well and it's like if you can tell a story like this compelling with you know, samurai and such, of course you can do it with basketball. The feeling of when a rebound is grabbed and you land on the ground and like the impact of like the sound and silence of like, this is mine, right? Like it's such a, just, it's it's powerful, man. And um, did, I, did I ever tell you I used to play basketball in secondary school? No, I didn't know that. So not like, well, like, and not in any like league or anything. I would just go and play basketball every day. Right. Huh. And, um, I was the year we used to play the year below us, but the year below us actually had like legit basketball players who took it seriously and they would trounce us every single day. Interesting. And it was was just this really like humiliating experience of losing to the year below you every single day <laughs> wow can i take a and, guess and, and sorry go on were you a power forward i was ah there we go <laughs> but do you know what you know is like always the craziest thing to me we beat them once mm. on the very last day before we graduated okay yeah. Oh and wow! What a story! It, it was. It really was. Um, it was kind of funny how hyped we got for beating people who were a year younger than us at a sport. <laughs> <laughs> but Willie, that sounds just, amazing! Like, what yeah, a fucking and, incredible sell! And uh, let's just not cut to uh, the other team going out for pizza afterwards. Like, it was their last day. Do you think we sold it right? Yeah, yeah. They're pretty happy about it. All right, let them enjoy it. <laughs> 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 don't take this away from me Wally. <laughs> please um the first slam dunk okay awesome um woolly number three on the 2023 best collection john side it came up earlier baldur's gate three ah uh, yes here we go um i love this game i love Mm-hmm. practically everything about this game i have never played a game before that made me feel like i was playing with a flesh and blood dungeon master <sighs> yeah yeah um the effort that went into making it feel like a tabletop adventure making it yeah. feel like all the possibilities you have that you can just think of with a pen and paper and go i want to do this and yeah. it's like, oh, no, no, we thought about that. We thought about what would happen. We thought about what would happen if you failed it. We thought about the ramifications of everyone around, you know? So I, I had a thing with this game where early on you encounter a mind flayer, a very dangerous creature, uh, like dying on the ground. And if you mm-hmm. get close, he can yep. kind of sucker you in and take over yeah. your mind and basically yeah. game over you, you know? Um, and I was like, oh, shit, I have to pass a bunch of dialogue checks Wait, what happens if before I get to him, I just blast him from long range and he died and Mm -hmm. I didn't have to go through any of that. And it was like, oh, okay, Yeah, that is the entire game. There are so there are so many stories I've been hearing about just like the ability to break the intended narrative path, so to speak. Because it's, again, it's it's Dungeons and Dragons, right? Like, if you decide to sneak around the back or equip the right spell and walk into this situation and do something that, that you know, the, the characters are not prepared for, or if you just roll really well, um, the fact that the game supports you splitting it open and, and you know, just flipping it upside down and it, and it like encourages you to break it in that way is just uh, it, it's incredible that they were able to do this and and they were able to do it by having it in early access over time and mm-hmm. then just iterate and iterate and have people try shit out until eventually it got to uh something that people are basically saying like this redefines the the rpg oh i and i completely agree and like i love the like the game design is so all-encompassing 
Like, mm. you are in a fight, but maybe you didn't need to get into this fight if you had taken this dialogue option. Or mm. maybe this fight is completely different if you took this dialogue option, you know? Yeah. And, like, yeah. what I found is I got into scenarios, and this is one of my favorite feelings with a game. I got into several scenarios where my back was completely against the wall, and I was like, I don't know if there's a way I can survive this. And then I start digging down into every option. I like start mm-hmm. trying out all the dialogue. I start respecking my characters and through all these incremental little changes, just about scraping through. And oh, it was so good. And like you, Willie, I have not beaten this game. I am 60 hours in. Okay, I'm I'm about 30 hours in. Um, who, are you, who, are you, who are you rolling with? Who's, who's your team? I mean, so I'm doing it co-op... Um... Well, uh, uh, to co-op with controllers uh, with with Reggie, um, but I mean, look, man, like uh, 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 I think it's clear. Like Asterion is lovely and has his incredible uses. Um, right now, uh, uh, Shart, as she's being affectionately called, uh, is uh, capable of uh, giving a little bit of extra juice when a roll is needed. I, I might have run into some controversy with with Shart. Um, I see. I've told this on a few separate streams and podcasts, so I apologize if you're hearing it for the millionth time. But um, you know, Willie, I'm 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 a little open to the old goth girl, mm-hmm. and goth girl with like a kind of little fringe. It's, mm-hmm. it's very good, mm-hmm. yeah. So like, I I roll into that game, and I'm like, oh, Shadowheart, like we're we're just dating. Like this is what's happening. Um, she looks so good with her with, with you know her little her little hair down, just very mm-hmm. cute. I like it. Mm-hmm. So we spend about 40 hours together, and uh, she goes through some stuff, and mm-hmm. she becomes a better version of herself internally. But, you know, she changes her hair. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I see. I see. And, um, you know, you give a little, you take a little, uh, character growth. Um, yeah. but now the silhouette has changed. Yeah. And is it really worth it to face your inner demons and better yourself if, um, if that's what happens to your hairline? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so. I see. I see. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so well, I, 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 I'm, um, I'm with Lazelle now. Okay. And okay. Well, yeah, you know, yeah, yep, yeah, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. I see. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not, a, it's not a thing. It's, it's not anyone's Say fault. Less. And if it, if it was, it would not be my fault, but yeah. Say less, fam. Yeah. yeah. Um, look, I, I, you know, we were playing through it, enjoying and, uh, you know, her company and that was all fine. And, you know, Lazelle was present and then she was, you know, racist froggy girl is going to, is going to racist and that's all good. Um, <laughs> And then Harlack walked into the frame. Right? Marissa Maines, ladies ladies and gentlemen. And then she did a little jig. (laughs) And it's like, all right. All right. I see where the next... 300 hours is going. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. boy, oh yeah. boy, man. Yeah. She so I made is I'm, I made Carl like a monk and she wrecks shit as a monk. That's interesting. I tried the same thing actually in uh when I was messing around. I, I gave that a shot just to see and you can actually change their class, mm-hmm. you know, and the game supports that. Um yeah, so you you know, I mean you want you want your fucking sub list reasons to Carlac, 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 power gap, Carlac like it's it's great. Um but all all that aside though, I just feel that um this yeah, this is just a uh, I mean there's a lot of games where there you know, there's openness and as you said like your dialogue choices can can vary and change things. But this is the anti David Cage. Like your choices really actually matter and affect things and it's not just that they matter but it's that you have so many choices right yeah and they're not it's not just when you start talking to somebody here are the things you can do it's before the conversation starts what did you cast you know what did you bring yeah. with you yeah no what it's, is your it's, party it's, doing? 
an incredibly intricate web of systems that keeps like reverberating in the most fascinating ways. Um, yeah. yeah, like I, I, I have some, I talk about this in the next favorite things video or probably the last one by this point. And I just go over one really fascinating anecdote and I have so many of them and oh, I, I, it's a phenomenal game. I, I think absolutely worthy of all its hype and everything. But yeah, and uh, think, number three, or sorry, go on. Oh no, and I just, and I think that like the fact that even though, so you need, we haven't beaten it yet, right? But no. those who have are all saying a billion hours later, it's fucking still incredible. And you know? I am getting into what I feel like final act story reveals. I'm I'm still very early in the final act, but even some of the shit they're pulling, I just feel like, oh my, I, you got me, like mm. you fucking got me, you know. Um, and it's 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 awesome. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Agreed. Lily, take us into the hallowed ground of the best collection 2023 Wooly side. Number two. I mean, if if you don't know me by now, then you never ever will. John. Street Fighter 6, man. The only reason I am shocked about this is that it's not number one. Aha. I guess I'll surprise a, a number of people then. Street Fighter 6 is just everything you could want from a street fighter game and then some uh i've for years been wanting to see the quality of life that the genre has gone through over the years has been spread apart across different games and no one ever brings it all together in one it's like people need to copy each other's homework and they just don't but with this game you got just a a really um you know the the new the new directors are such loving fans of the work and of the series and of the characters in the world and it shows in every ounce of its being top to bottom um i An mean absolutely fucking phenomenal game like i love it so yeah. much the new characters are all winners they're all instant classics that are just like welcome aboard you're up there with the legends, you're right in there. You know the all timers. So I, 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 um, I have been playing as Aki. Yep. And I don't think I got the. I don't think I got the brains to play Aki, but I've been having fun with her. She's made mm -hmm. a welcome distraction for Manon and uh, Marissa. But what a wild, incredible character! Yeah, yeah, super weird and slithery and. Just taking the fang concept and like improving it all across the board, you know. As I said, like you can't fix Aki, but you can fix Fang. <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> right. Um, she's great. And like, yeah, and like I love um, you know, Kimberly, the the new Bushin Ryu Ninja. Kim you know? have you seen you've you've seen Kimberly's DLC? Costume. Oh my god, costume three? Like what it should have been the should have been the default, right? I agree. It, I agree. And the, the default only reason, sick. The only reason why not is because it gives off more Ibuki than Guy, admittedly. Yeah. But I also think they probably want to show Kimberly's face because her facial modeling is fucking awesome. But goddamn, she's incredible in that outfit. Yeah. And you know, and and do we need to talk about the wedding dress? I don't think we do. I think no, just no, we just no. you know Marissa. Um, I think right? one of my favorite Mediterranean moments. muscle mommy. Yeah, one of my favorite moments this year was us mirror matching Marissa at what, like <laughs> three a.m. in our hotel yeah. room. Yeah, in, uh, oh, it was that was as you put it. We touch gloves. Yep, just just a yep. little, just a little like little little skirmish. Let's just see what's going on. I'm like, yeah. okay. So I have switched to pad since that, ah. and we're gonna play. We're, we're gonna play proper in at my okay. Rest. Okay. I mean, um, it, it's just like come so far, and to see the drive system that. Uh, has something for veterans. If you're a fan of Third Strike, it's got parries. If you're a fan of Street Fighter IV, it's got something like a focus attack for you. Um, but then it brings enough new as well with all of that that it, uh, it it changes things up. You know, the drive rush is just this like 
dash run fucking get in there aggression you know um stay on on your opponent's ass like you 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 have to um be aware of all of these threats at once and the fact that like it's all tied to what is essentially your guard meter right it just it changes so much it's like you're familiar with these mechanics you have them all available but also your ex moves your od moves now as they're called are tied to that and when you use all of that they're free resources but when they're gone you're now in a burnt out state street fighter never does anything like that you know your character is tired and you can still fight you still have all the moves that like are important to you but like if you get cornered and crumpled against that wall you're done you get staggered yeah. for so much uh, uh, uh you know and like damage what i love is like these mechanics are so fun but the way they are visually represented and shown to the player like when you enter burnout state and all of a sudden you're <sighs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. awesome um, and then yeah. like the like the the drive attack um yeah the drive impact the drive impact the fact that that looks as incredible as it yes. does like yes. whenever like it takes so little knowledge to pull off a drive it takes good judgment but it takes so little knowledge or dexterity to pull off a drive impact but I, i'm convinced when you do you're like oh this game fucking rules yeah, I'm a god. <laughs> I w- I want to feel that forever. And I know? Th- I love that they did it to in such a way where they realized Street Fighter has always been stylized artistically. You know, Aki Man proportions on Ryu. The everyone has been very exaggerated over the years, and it's been a defining trait about the series, for better and for worse. In some cases, those 3D models got really weird looking, but for the most part, it's always been like artistically um um prioritizing you know the the exaggerated characters this takes a step towards reality and it makes them a lot more like you know it's the re engine and it's taking making everyone look a lot more like real life than they ever have and so because of that there's like almost a feeling of like well we have to compensate and we need to make sure that the ink and the paint and the explosion of color when you do a drive impact and land it has to just make up for what we're lacking with, you know, the the character design almost. And mm. it comes together in a really cool way. Like people just explode into paint. Um you know, so it's it's all working on that level. Um I would also th- say some of the best ultras and supers of all time. They're um, so good. I don't know I can tell you I think a finishing move I like better than Manon's level three critical art. Yeah. La 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 la. <laughs> and then like the 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 variation, what the the, the critical the art critical variation. Art. Yes. Yeah. Where it's like the way and like I think we talked about this uh in too many games, but like the way so many of them aren't even just a harder version of the first, they're a more desperate, tired desperate. version. Yes. And oh it's so good. So People, uh, I remember when Luke was revealed and like he wasn't a super uh, uh, beloved in Street Fighter V. I always loved him because I'm I'm happy that um, MMA is getting representation in Street Fighter. I thought that it was what it's like that needed to exist. You know, it's it's what we think of when we think of street fighting these days. The character, the version of him in Street Fighter VI that just makes him so much better. You know, um, you get the fact. Uh, yeah, we've talked about it. It's like when he lands the critical art on you and he's ground and pound, right? He's doing it, taking you to Memphis. And it's clean. It's right. It's the way he's supposed to do it. But the critical art version is like, fuck, fuck. Why won't you stay down? You know? Yeah, like he, it's you take so the extra good. Hit, you try to counter yeah. it and he's like, ugh. And it was the moment that he lands it and then it hard cuts to the close up and he just and he breathes and gets off mm-hmm. of me. like that. That yep. shot yep. of the breathe, Perfect. the exhale is where I'm like, oh, I'm sold on all of yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, Willie, Street Fighter 6 was my number one. <laughs> okay. Okay. I see. Well, I, I knew I see. we weren't we weren't holding that down back. We can't, we can't, because it's just, I mean, when you took, you, you like, the fact that modern mode is introduced now, and it's like, for years, the classic is, all, is there, and like, modern, there's just been so much discussion about getting new players in, like, whether or not you can do it in a way that is going to work for 
um, balancing, you know, like making easier moves to execute and like you don't want people to, because there's been stylish modes over the years, but how do you have people feel like they're not being like um, patronized to, to feel like they're mm -hmm. being talked down to with like some kind of simpler thing and it's like, oh, it's simple really. It, it's like, it's easier to do the moves, but you lose a couple tools and you lose a little bit of damage, you know, it's yeah. actually fair. Um, it's it's great that they have that implemented in a way that is just like we we've embraced it, you know. They've um come up with the ability to just uh embrace as well things like, you know, making PVP wackiness in a Souls game, all that batshit memes, get your avatars together, go do an avatar battle, have all that fun over here and then street fighters happening yeah. over and here. And like they they let us make freaks. Like they knew what they were doing. They they took the limiters off and were like, "Fucking, look whatever. I don't care. It's fine." Cronenberg creatures, man. Yeah. yeah. Um and then you've got a world tour mode. You've got a story mode that you can go to and level up your character with and learn moves and do Hado pizza to learn how to do a little Hadoken input or a sonic boom. Yeah, that's stuff's so great. And like I love to see like accessibility stuff like that. And like, yes. like me and you are never gonna need it, but like it's cool. Like, yeah, bring people into fighting games for God's sake. Incredible. You can play yeah. blind, you can play with sound notification, like all kinds of different I was so like I, I know that you like the game awards, like whatever. I was so shocked it didn't win accessibility yeah. at game awards Stunned. it seemed to be the most clear winner for for that particular yeah. award uh, um and then just the fact that there's a you know a, an, an incredible uh capcom fighters network you can see people's replays and actually it works you can you know what i mean go through your own uh, uh, uh progression and stuff and the training mode is better than it's ever been if you're a veteran of the franchise and you want to train and learn and improve or if you're brand new it has all these little training options that are like here's how you practice with punishing here's how you practice uh stopping jump ins you know or yeah. here's frame data a really scary concept that like see and like they give you a little thing a little description too it's like hey this seems scary it's not that bad but no it's, you it's need, not yeah you don't need to learn it but if you do want to like figure out a little bit more about how to improve this might be where you want to start looking you know yeah um it's the best launch version of a street fighter game ever and i can't imagine where we go from here yeah um <sighs> okay any final thoughts on Street Fighter Six? That's that's it. That's it. Cool. Okay. I hope so they listen, make the costumes well, less expensive. <laughs> I got now. Street Fighter Six is my number one. So all I yeah. got is my number two left, and then we'll do your number one, Willie. But real quick, I just want to give a few shout outs to things I think are super interesting that might have made my list that I have not spent enough time with. Number one, okay. Alan Wake Two. I'm only a couple <sighs> hours in. Seems rad. Uh, number two, Lies of P. Liza P mm -hmm. came out and it got a pretty like, yeah, it's pretty good. And now I feel like you're seeing people digging into it further and being like, no, this fucking rules. Like, this is awesome. It's um, more than Bloodborne at home. Yeah, uh, Joseph Anderson just put out a really good video about it. That's a really great breakdown. Uh, Elfelt in Guilty Gear. Uh, I've only <laughs> spent a couple of, couple of like an hour as her. I had a, an amazing time. My God, she is so fun to play as. Seems um, really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably a bunch of other shit I'm forgetting. But my number two for the 2023 Best Collection John side is a game that does not exist. Vermis. So, <sighs> Wooly, this is what I have spent a massive amount of time making a video about. And this is why I couldn't get my video done for Christmas and had to switch to a different video. It's all because of Vermis. I followed this artist called Plastaboo, and Plastaboo is insane. He is maybe the most, or they're maybe the most, like, incredible range of art I have ever seen. Weird 3D renders, beautiful pencil sketches, amazing paintings, digital pictures, just everything you can imagine. They released a book earlier this year, and I ordered it the second I found out the idea. It is a game guide for a game that isn't real. Oh, wow. <laughs> and and okay. it is one of the most incredibly presented. Actually, I think I have it here. It is one of the most like incredibly presented things I have ever fucking seen. 
and it's like the layouts of the pages is just like the most beautiful shit and it's like the graphic design the illustration it takes you through an entire game and like it might it could it wouldn't even just have to be a video game this could be like a dungeons and dragons campaign and there's all these like hints and implications at the rules that govern this world and like the gameplay mechanics and how they work like there's a character select there's equipment pickups there's optional side paths there's all this are there screenshots there's no screenshots that's where it draws the line so this could be like a legend of zelda top-down pixel this could be a dark souls game and it's it's very clearly hugely influenced by like uh, fromsoft stuff but it is just unbelievable it is one of the most brilliant creative things i have ever experienced and i absolutely love it it's like 15 bucks it's like not even expensive you know and i really I am going to release a video in 2023 heavily centered around this thing. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And I guess like, I mean, I have to wonder if it's like the story of someone who wanted to make a game and then couldn't and then decided, let me just do this anyway. Or so if it was, you know. The reason this video got so out of hand was because I went searching to see if there was a community of people making fake video games. Oh. And oh boy, there sure is. Wow. Okay. And that is that is what that video is going to be about. Um I wanted to get it done for the holidays, but then I got COVID. Turns out uh mm. turns out a, a new symptom of COVID is horrible diarrhea. It's been patched. Oh. I'm yeah. glad to but hear yeah. it's been patched. Okay. But yeah, Vermis, I will have more to say about this in 2024. Uh, could not recommend it to people enough. And also just check out Plastaboo's work. Um, maybe my favorite illustrator in existence right now. Okay. Fuck. Wooly. Those are, those are words. Number one for the Wooly best collection. Well, look, you are not wrong to put your number one upfront street fighter 6 as we've just detailed uh, uh lovingly it is it is the best uh for and it is a hope for the future of the franchise and you're not wrong to put that there nor are you wrong to expect that i would have put it there myself mm-hmm. um but it's not my number one for one simple reason um a game that didn't exist similarly to what you're describing f- feels like it was ripped out of my brain and put into reality. And Street Fighter is a lifelong experience and it's a thing that I love and will love for the rest of my life. And seeing that iterate in- into its like best state is just the happiest. But the thing that I never ever thought would exist coming into existence is a once in a lifetime perhaps opportunity. Because it's, the, it's one of the first times this has ever happened to me. The name of the game is Hi-Fi Rush. Hi-Fi Rush is simply the culmination of everything that I love brought together. <laughs> Have you had a chance? Wooly, there's a conversation I've been dreading between us. (laughs) Okay. All right. All right. That's all right. That's okay. Let me, let me get there. All right. That, and, and you know what? I mean, (laughs) I'm so sorry, dude. I know how much you love this game. And I tried. And I tried. The name of the show. Eight. Friendly wolves. So fine. So be it. All right. Let me get it out. Let me get. I let can't. Me get it out. I. I've. Been, I have come at this conversation mentally from so many angles. I didn't think it would be your number one. <laughs> okay. okay. No. You, listen. You got shit to say. We'll get to it. Just. Let me just talk to the jury. Okay. Let me just talk to the bench. All right. Okay. Look, okay. Personally, and that's the thing is, when I, the things that I love are a, a character action game in the style of a Devil May Cry. Right. I love 
a game that is the aesthetics of a jet set radio um the rhythm gameplay of a guitar man right the amazing ost well, well don't don't you dare invoke guitar man emotions are already high enough the amazing ost and boss music pop-offs of metal gear rising revengeance where the vocals kick in right when the action is at its peak right um the assists and team hyper combos of a marvel versus capcom the humor and setting of a futurama episode right um a a, a game that has jojo love a, like out, out center front you know and obvious a game that loves parries as much as almost i do in that it dedicates an entire boss fight to parries mm. A game with love for Kamen Rider Hibiki, uh, with a game with like a ridiculous Zeno Gears reference, and just it, it's it's a it's a, a, a just it's all of that coming together, and not to just say that it's built on all these things that remind you of things because when it comes together, it comes into something that's just really fun to play, and you vibe with it, and you just you listen to the music, and you do your combos, and you just. You know, when you hit that S rank and you get the chai, chai, chai to the beat, you know, um, it just feels great, man. Um, you know, like all the, 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 the bits and comedy are just like they know of the pain of corporate soul drain. They've been in the QA trenches. I've been in the QA trenches. I used to test video games. The you know like everything about that whole section of it, like they just understand like that aspect, the bureaucracy and the bullshit. It's hilariously landing all of that, and all of this came out of nowhere because Tango GameWorks they dropped it like almost like when you in the back in the days when you'd flip through a Game Pro magazine and see an ad for a game that's like out now, and you're like, I didn't know this existed, and, and here they, it they're is. They're the Ghostwire guys, aren't they? Um, yeah, no. I, no, 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 I, wait, uh, are they? Hold on. Um, let me just confirm, but, uh, Beth I know Bethesda published, uh, and Ikumi Nakamura did, yeah, Tango, yeah, yeah, that's the developer, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, correct, yeah, um, but, um, uh, yeah, John Johannes, right, a Jojo for a, as well uh, uh, in, in charge of this project that just like did an amazing job bringing all these things that I, I, I love. And um, I, I love I, I just feel that like there's been so many times throughout life where I was like, what if there was a, an action game where the music synced perfectly to your moves and vice versa? And, and the two just had a synergy to them, you know? And so I feel like this, when you're in the flow, the flow state, and the music is rewarding you, and you're on the beat, and you're playing it all, and it all comes together, um, it just felt so awesome. And it was a, a brand new experience um, that, that I had always wanted to exist, you know? Uh, I, uh, by the end, I just, I loved the peaks. The characters were great. Um, you know, I couldn't really ask for much more. Like, the only thing I wanted to be able to do was to go back and pro play more during the 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 um, the sessions in between me Let's Playing it. But outside of that, it was just like, okay, go back and beat it, and then you'll you'll be fine. Um, okay. And then the that, fact that it, sorry, it, has, uh, it has a soundtrack that is, like, streamer safe and or, the, or like, full-on licensed music, and they're both synced to these boss fights, and they're wow, both fucking yeah. incredible. So even if you turn off the licensed music or you stick with it, you're hearing an, a great, great, in some cases. And that, the, that is really cool because it's kind of like, um, that's kind of like two different playthroughs, right? Like, if, yeah. I, if I love this game, yeah, okay. So the first boss is Nine Inch Nails, right? And if I know, you're like, I'm aware. Yeah, and like, that's uh, incredible. But if for any reason you're like, you know, you don't want to, you're, you're doing something like I do and you have to, you know, listen to the license for uh, unlicensed music, you still get an incredible original soundtrack. And they're, it's phenomenal, you know, the fact that they went that hard when they didn't mm -hmm. have to. Someone um, gave a shit. Like, it's someone really fucking cared about this thing. Top to bottom, you feel like someone gave a shit. And, and that's, I just, I just loved it. Yeah. That's the blank space where now the prosecution steps up. <laughs>
No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, I'm okay, okay. Know. Listen, 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 listen. I, I appreciate the hell out of like what an amazing pitch for that game. And I can totally I now understand why it's your number one. And you know, I think for me, I will occasionally encounter a game and it's just a vibe thing. It just does not click. It does not connect. And there's nearly like a repulsion about it where I'm just like, no, whatever this is, I cannot get into it. Life is Strange was one of them. The original yeah. Life is Strange series. I just was like, this is like nails Hell on the chalkboard teenagers. to me. Yeah. I yeah. And I I'm saw so down for the hipster Rush. world. It's funny. I'm down for the, the hipster kids. Do it. Do your thing. It's got to be for someone's got to make those games for somebody, you know? So with Hi-Fi Rush... I appreciate it had a lot of cool stuff going on with it, but there was an element of it that I felt like I was experiencing an unironic Poochie episode. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. The 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 chai self insert. I just couldn't. I just couldn't handle chai. I was like, <laughs> man. Okay. Fuck this guy. He, it's all about him. So that's. But a- look, look. I have already been through this on stream. I have been howled at in the streets for this opinion i understand out there it's wrong but in here unfortunately it's right is it because corsica's a scot (laughs) no i like the scots okay all right (laughs) it's the fucking english i uh, um (laughs) that's not true i have a lot of english friends um but also i feel free to chuck this down to me being a rhythmless fuck Oh, did you have a hard time with the? Um, the I actually uh, the music? did. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And did I can. You... I, I. I like. I like rhythm games, but I think a lot of times with rhythm games, it's me like blunt forcing my way through them. I'm did you learning. put it on the more forgiving mode for um, uh, margin of error? I'm not sure I did actually. So there's you can you can when you play like you could play on a more strict rhythm requirement, or you can play mm-hmm. with a more uh, loose rhythm requirement. And, um, you know, if you are rhythmically challenged. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, you, have, you, have, you having a good time there, Wooly? <laughs> if, if the beat is difficult, there's a, there's a mode that actually, like, makes that part of it easier. So, but... Chai is the main character. You have to, you know what I mean? It's Fry from Futurama. You're going to have to be down with Fry to get into this, right? Like, Yeah, yeah. But look, I think the, the center of it is just, just something about it that did not vibe with me. I and gotcha. I'm not super interested in, like, tearing the game down or explaining okay. to someone why they shouldn't like it. That's for the next section. Um, <laughs> speaking of which, Wooly, uh, yeah, you kind of hit the nail on the head there. Name of this podcast ain't Friendly Wolves. It's Versus Wolves. Um, and you guys may have noticed that we've been listing out our, uh, you know, our separate lists and there's been no overlap. It's just been a very harmonious uh, experience of the Leary year list. Well, uh, you can take that and toss it into the fucking sun because welcome to the Tournament of the Damned and the Great! <laughs> Where would we be without a tournament arc, John? What is the point of art if you cannot say it is better than other art? <laughs> so the way this is going to work is we're both going to take our top eight picks, drop it into a randomizer, do a tournament bracket, and decide the 2023 versus Wolves champion of intergalactic battle triumph and success. Well, uh... I would, however, like to make sure that included in my selections is the beverage Optifast, because I would like to see the battles of a beverage versus other things. (laughs) I mean, sure, sure. I think we actually, we can actually fit fit it in. Um, Because we have overlap with with Baldur's Gate, right? Okay, you know what? We're going to take a little break and do up this bracket real quick. All right. Um, No no time will pass for you, but for us, several minutes. Friends, welcome back. It is time for the main event to begin. 
It is the Versus Wolves International 2023 Tournaments. We have divided up all our competitors into, uh, let's say, uh, 60, it's, uh, 12, 8 matches? 8 matches, Willie? Is it 8? Yes? That's how tournaments work, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight matches. Okay, the the, the brackets are Rinderita versus Armored Core 6, Saltburn versus Pluto, Baldur's Gate 3 versus Hi Fi Rush, John Wick 4 versus Street Fighter 6, Slay the Princess versus the first Slam Dunk, TMNT Mutant Mayhem versus the Country of Portugal, Vermis versus Optifast 900, Aisha X Righteousness versus Across the Spider Verse. With one rule, Wooly, mm-hmm. we only got two minutes to make each of these decisions. If we fail to make a decision in that time, both entrants will be disqualified. Fine by me. Tournament arcs are where you learn about which characters you're gonna love for the rest of the series and which ones are just flops. Who's gonna dig down and show off their special abilities. You gotta show off everything you've got. I'm ready for it. Okay, okay, I'm excited. And I think whatever happens, Willie, friends till the end. Get the fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I, I, mean, actually, if, I get to say back to you, John. Um, okay. We are officially starting. Rinderita versus Armored Core 6. Go. Wooly, there is no way that we can't pick Rinder. You heard the story. You heard the passion. You heard the journey. Do you want to pick Armored Core 6? Which, let's face it, a tired, moldy game series no one even fucking cares about. Or do you want to look to the future? Do you want to see... Pile Bunk. Does he have a Pile Bunker at any point? No, he doesn't, Wooly. He has Narita Special 4, okay? (laughs) Can he allow me to feel the soothing, fun memories of building my gunpla on a Sunday morning? Will no, he... he does not watch anime. Can he dodge missiles in an Itano circus? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that is a lie. I am saying armor. You don't know. Six. You haven't seen him wrestle. I have not seen him wrestle. This is true. The one minute time limit has passed. We have one minute to make this decision. Okay. Rin Narita is one man. There are many lovable characters in Armored Core 6 who you hear and grow and watch throughout the journey of the story. And FromSoft has delivered them with ever so much grace and talent. And it is a beautiful thing to to witness and to, to, to behold. You can build your own robot in any possible way. What... What can Rin Narita bring to the table to challenge this? He's the son of Strong Style, Wooly. He's, he's, what, do you love Okada? Do you love New Japan? This is the man, we have 20 seconds. This is the man inheriting their destiny, Wooly. He can do it. Wooly, you have to trust me. Rin Narita is the way to go on this. Are you sure? Because Armored Core is here and established. Wooly, we have eight seconds. Wooly, I will give you a pass for another round. Are you sure? Three seconds, Wooly. Fine, Rinderita. Oh, we barely made that one. Rinderita goes through. Thank God. Thank God. I'll trust it. I'll trust it. But damn it. A good game fell today. A good game fell. A good game fell. But will a good film slash anime fall? We got Saltburn versus Pluto. Astro Boy is the beginning of so many people's journey, the introduction of the boy hero that they know and they love, and Pluto in particular is all of that taken into the modern era. It's, it's, it's again, it's Asimov. It is the robots. It's the, it's the dreams of electric sheep. Okay, you know what, Willie? I think I'm actually with you on this one. I think Pluto should go through. I love Saltburn as a movie. It's fucking incredible. To me, what I've seen of Pluto and what you've said about it makes it feel like it's just that nudge above. There is something special about Pluto, and I do think it deserves this win. Tired, middle-aged Japanese man who's just had enough wearing a trench coat moves yeah. on. No, he he moves on. He moves on. Uh, 
Motherfucker! Oh, fucking god. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 <gasps> versus High Five Rush. The two minute timer has started. Okay, look, Wooly. Why? Wooly look at me. Look, 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 look at me. Look at me. Look Why? At me. We both love Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> god damn it! Fuck! The man's logic is flawless. Shit! <laughs> it can't be challenged. Yeah. But Willie, okay, 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 look. <laughs> what does your heart say? It, it, like, it's it's literally that... <laughs> yeah! It's number one, but fucking fine. Yes. No, like, Willie. Could... Okay, Willie. here's what I'm gonna do. You have one minute and six seconds, sorry, one minute and five seconds to convince me otherwise. Go. The pr if, if I saw the credits of Baldur's Gate 3, I might already be there. The fact Which, that I'm not there yet is already bothering me, so I know the potential for its growth is, it, ha it has to move on. Baldur's Gate has to move on. It has to. Okay, that's the decision made. Baldur's Gate right. three beats Hi Fi Rush. Its position is locked only behind my 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 progress. Okay, John Wick four versus Street Fighter six. Uh, Bro, I love John Wick four. I like. Come on, like Street Bro. Fighter six. I'm sorry, but I don't know if John Wick fights a lion hand to hand and takes it on. I can't see bullets harming uh, Marissa's glorious abs. Look, Wooly, it's the story. It's a story as old as time. Once again, martial arts lose, or once again, martial arts defeat guns. There you go. That thank yeah, you. I, just, for a second, yeah. you scared me. Right? No, no. That that. How would that even make sense? You pull out the Glock and then scoot him <laughs> and yeah. just yeah. absorb the shocks. Yeah, yeah. It's cool done. that you have an AK forty-seven. Check out this high block. Right? Drive yeah. impact. Bah! All right, yeah. we're done here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Sorry, John. Um, Slay the Princess versus th the first slam dunk. Okay, look, <laughs> I, I, Slay the Princess, I brought it to the party here. I... I think Slam Dunk wins. I, I felt your passion earlier. I am so excited to watch it. Let's Slam Dunk it is. The dream of basketball cannot be denied. Okinawa forever we gotta do it come on we gotta do it we gotta do it simple if, if, simple if only for this chance for a mediocre artist like in a way to get a shot at the big time but that's what to i love about the idea of the first slam dunk we have this amateur this newcomer in the world <laughs> of manga and it, it shines it, like woolly the fact that this movie is successful i imagine has to shine some hope into his sad little life just a small little no one thought he could make it anywhere you know and yeah. finally he's got a shot at the big time so let's believe in him mhm mm mhm mm absolutely um oh. next up <laughs> we have teenage mutant ninja turtles mayhem versus the country of portugal all right now listen very carefully all right portugal okay, what's the population is a of portugal 10 million okay the population is approximately 10 million people. <laughs> okay. Okay. It is a culture and a, there's a language. It is a beautiful, storied, traditional place with great food, great, great history, lots of old and lovely stories and buildings and architecture and, and everything. And yet, four scrawny, prepubescent turtle boys... And Seth Rogen dialogue. I Surely. counter you. I counter with the fact that they play MOPs anti up twice. Any up twice ain't fucking going down. I'm sorry, Portugal, but you lose to MOP. It's not. Yeah. It's it can't happen, bro. It Any can't up. happen. It doesn't even make sense. Fado music is beautiful. Any up is fucking culture, bro. You can't do it. <laughs> maybe if 
Maybe if the Fado, maybe if it played twice, it would have a shot, but it don't. I'm sorry. Busta okay. Rhymes now. MOP now. What you want now? <laughs> Just, uh, okay. That that lady that we saw in the bar is just like singing, and then they just rush the stage. And yeah. <laughs> uh, uh. Okay. Uh, in 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 an entry that makes me feel like I am losing my mind even more. Um, Vermis versus the diet drink up to fast nine hundred. <laughs> I mean, look, man. I, I don't even know how to argue this. I have a very... John, if I may. Okay. Optifast is a drink that exists. So Vermis wins is what I'm hearing. <laughs> One of these two categories exists in real life, and the other is hypothetical. Is so okay, okay, okay. Let, let, is Fugazi. Let, let, let's let's come at this another way. Let's come at this another way. Um, one of these products has dramatically improved your quality of life. Uh, probably extended your life by years. Um, it's given you a better outlook, better kind of mental health space, better physical health. And I don't see why that couldn't be Vermis if you read it. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> It's nice to live in a world of make-believe and pretend and hopes and dreams that will never happen. And trust me, as someone who's had lots of ideas for games that have never happened, it sure feels nice when you can get them out there in the form of a book or maybe a t-shirt line or two. But nonetheless, Optifast is a real thing that exists and does change and can change lives. <laughs> We appear to be at a stalemate. I'm with sorry. 25 seconds I'm so left. I'm sorry if I had to go there, bro. But, you know, sometimes we just got to be real, right? The hypothetical, the idea, the thing that left. doesn't exist versus the, the, the living proof. And I argue that other lives might Three change seconds for the left. better. One second left. <laughs> fine, fine. You win. You win. Fine. It up to uh, up to, your little drink goes through, Wooly. I hope you're happy. Two hundred and twenty-five calories of victory. Oh, that is really good. And finally, Aisha X Righteousness versus Across the Spider Verse. All right. You uh, know, look, I think I think Spider Verse takes this. Spider Verse is fucking incredible. Um, it's also like three hours long mm -hmm. and it's very good. Aisha X Righteousness. I haven't even heard this song yet, but it's about three minutes long. Can mm -hmm. we argue that those 60 seconds translate versus the 60 minutes of quality it condensed? Like that's the real battle. Minute for hour. Pound for pound kind of thing. Pound for pound. I mean... It's a really good, like, minute and a half. <laughs> what? And I, Tell me. And I would say, I would say, if you measured my listening this year, I probably spent more time with Aisha X Righteousness than I did across the Spider-Verse. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Also, there's the fact that how many people have been hurt by Aisha X Righteousness? I mean, maybe one or two people died because it's it's because it's so fucking hype. I, I, don't I mean, know. that's did, super did, sick. Did across did, the righteousness across Spider Verse hurt people? Oh, because the crunch, the crunch. Oh. How many artists were crunched in the creation of that song? I'm gonna <laughs> say none that I know. Perhaps of. none. We have thirty seconds to pick a winner. How much does the weight of that impact where we go from here? I cast I my mean, law with I with Aisha. I'm going with Aisha. You're going Aisha. Did I win you over yeah. on? Yeah. Okay. All right. You We're did, going Aisha. You did, you did. Okay. Cool. We're that is the Aisha. preliminaries done. We now enter the not quarterfinals. Quarterfinals. Quarterfinals before semifinals. 
Rin Narita versus the anime Pluto. <laughs> I swear to God, man. All right, look. Now, you could say what you will about Armored Core, but Pluto, the main character, Gesicht, is a very down-to-earth man who is also just about his business. He doesn't have a whole lot of flair, and he's not too concerned with, you know, ec- the extraneous. He does his job, and he reports back home to his wife lovingly, who waits for him. Mm. I mean, if that is not a Rin Narita counterpart, I don't know what is. Yeah, that's a really good point. If you wanted a lesser Rin Narita, you could watch Pluto. Um, as we oh covered in the previous bracket, um, uh, Pluto isn't real. I can't. Whereas are, are Rin we... Narita is a flesh and blood man. <laughs> Wow. Which I believe, I believe, by the standard of this tournament, we have already established is a, a huge weigh- weighing factor. Some might say that one of us uh, let that slide so they could bring it up in this point. R- life, robots, the whole point is the fuck. Oh my god. So is he just shitting on robots the whole way through? Is that what this is? Is this Rin Narita just dunking on the concept of mechanical life? Absolutely. Uh, he Rita defeats is, the mechas is, of he, Armored he, Core. He, he's, and he's, now, yeah, yeah. No, no metal can stop a well-trained <laughs> wrestler. Fucking fine. You want to use the shit I brought up against me? Then so fucking be it. Rin Narita this, moves on. This is the same. My first game of the year, Dance Wooly. Okay, I, I swear to I God. Fuck. Okay. Well, how about okay. this motherfucker? How about this shit? How about Baldur's, Baldur's Gate, Gate 3? 3 versus Street Fighter 6? Okay, now I think what? there's I think there's a way we decide this. Who wins in a fight, Carlock or Marissa? Let me get that nosebleed out of the way. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh... Could you just, I mean, the sweat, the muscles. Well, we got, we got, got to focus here, buddy. What are we doing? What are we doing, bro? <laughs> what are we doing? Um, ah. fuck, look, uh, I, I mean, to me, the brain says Baldur's Gate 3 for all its incredible, ambitious design. My but heart cannot heart. move past Street Fighter 6. It's but just, the heart. It is the it it is like, an just such a monumental achievement in fighting games, and I I know I'm going to be playing it for the next five years. Yeah, I don't know. I can say that about anything else on this list. Street Fighter Six is doing itself amazing. It's doing more than just itself perfectly. Like it's doing a lot of other things no one expected it to do amazingly well. And that deserves it. And also, I mean, think about the way that she walks after she punches you into oblivion back into the frame, dude. Yep. Take my yep. love. Yep. Take how much of it? All of it. All of it. All of it. Street Fighter 6 moves on. Street Fighter 6 moves on. The first slam dunk movie versus TMNT Mutant Mayhem. Um, I am actually, I think I gotta go with the first slam dunk movie on this one, dude. I think you, I think you sold it incredibly hard. And like, I love TMNT. I I love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. But the big flaw in that movie, I would say, is that at, at an hour and 10 minutes in, a Giant monster shows up and it's time to stop the giant monster, which is how so many of these fucking movies end. Okay. And whereas and it, in it's this It's already ca- burnt its MOP pass, okay? We yes, this is true. However, we are going ag- we are again hitting the streets with basketball, you know. But yes, fine. We don't have to, it can't Look, be the same point every single time. But a, a a giant does appear in this as well in Slam Dunk in the form of Akagi. And the other, the other center that he has to, he has to fight, you know. Um, okay. I mean, look, yeah. I, b- ball, ball, life, ball is life. Ball wins, okay. right? Okay. Like, um, it's just what it is. Optifast nine hundred versus the song Aisha X Righteousness. 
I mean, this is just the net positives that it brings to your life versus the net positives it brings to mine. You know, and, and we'll see whether or look, not. Look, I'm cool with up to fast going through. I mean, look, like I said, one of these things will be will will continue to show its benefits into the next year, and yeah. the other might not. I, was, I um, thought you were going to say, and the other is up to fast. And the other is up to fast. <laughs> all right. All right. Up to fast okay. moves on. Semi-finals. Rin Narita versus Street Fighter VI. And this is an easy one for the first time. Um, I think we both know what has to happen here. Um. So that means the finals will be Rin Narita versus the either f- the first whoa, whoa, slam whoa, whoa, dunk or. Uh, we- oh, I'm sorry. What? Is this what it is? Okay, no. Now hold on a minute. I I was concerned when approaching this show that this would be a a veiled excuse to just run fucking wrestling shit. <laughs> I, I, whatever do you mean, just, Willie? What? Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Now, what's now, wrong? Hold okay. on. Willie, you seem upset. Let's hash it out. What's going on, buddy? All right. Can we? Are you at upset very at least, how the first semi final wins? Can we bring it down to brass tax hair in the same way that it was Carlac versus Marissa? This mm-hmm. has to be Rin Narita versus Zangief. Okay. Uh, is is it a shoot or is it a, is is it a work? I mean, does does Zangief do work? I don't know. You tell me. Uh, and I think the fact that Street Fighter Six has never defined that is a major strike against it. Zangief works shoot all day, every day. He defeats real fighters with his pro wrestling style. Everything he does has developed his body into a, an iron, invincible muscle fortress. I don't know that Rin is ready for this. But what if... But what if one little boy, 20 seconds, Wooly, what if one little boy can make his dreams come true? Okay, okay. Okay. Can Rin Narita land a cross-up on Zangief because his lariat doesn't hit behind his head? Five seconds. Can he land a cross-up? Fine, Street Fighter 6 goes through. Street Fighter 6 enters the finals against either the first slam dunk or how did this get to the semifinals? <laughs> Optifast 900. You have anything to, more to say about this fucking drink, Wooly? Because like the longer we get into this, the longer it's like, oh, you know, this drink has made means that Wooly is going to live a long and healthy life. That's starting to look like a pretty bad thing to me, Wooly. <sighs> You know, how about this? How about okay. this? Okay. I'll give you Rin Narita. I'll give you Rin Narita. And we believe that a little, in the same potential of the future that lies inside of that wrestler, the potential that lies in Inoue, that artist that may, that might do it one day, Right. That like the, the the inner talent that has not yet been unlocked <laughs> moves on to the finals. How about that? Okay, so that means so it's now Street Fighter Six in the finals versus the first Slam Dunk. Oh 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 oh. Okay, is okay. I was I was going to give you your your wrestling man. No, I Rin Narita can take bronze. He can take bronze. That's enough. <sighs> The life-changing Optifast. <laughs> what the fuck is this list? I mean, what, like... do I'm telling you, it makes it... it it's huge. It's a big deal. <laughs> like, the first Slam Dunk is, is a great movie. But this <laughs> shit... I, like, I can't know. believe you're arguing this. I can't believe you're arguing this. You gave such an impassioned, beautiful <laughs> summary of the first slam dunk, and now you're throwing it under the bus for 220 calories. 25. 225. 225. I was... F- I, I 20 seconds, Wooly. We need Optifast. a finalist. I am not budging. 
Optifast got me through the first slam dunk. I was able to experience that movie and enjoy Ten it. Ten seconds, Wooly! Fine. Fine. What do you want? Uh, I, I gotta go with first slam dunk versus Street Fighter first 6. First slam dunk it is. The drink has been defeated. The drink, an almighty power had dark horse in this competition. <laughs> okay. The finals. The first slam dunk versus Street Fighter 6. No time limit for this one. Willie, I just want to start by making one single point. Little and Noe needs a win. What does that I mean? I mean, clearly his his career has never really taken off. He's never done a work of any real significance. And I think I think if we could bless him with just one <laughs> win, I think that would I mean, imagine his happy little what is he like twenty? Imagine like his little face lo- just lighting just, up when he hears Just turning that. his life around, you know? Yeah. Like some recognition for the first time. For the first time ever, he might even get like a, a follower. You know, it's yeah. it's kind of incredible. Yeah, like man. imagine how much that would mean to a young man. Yeah, you know, Street Fighter. Street Fighter has been out here changing lives for so long. You know, but mm-hmm. but this little this little scruff muffin over here, just coming out of art school, it's got a couple of ideas. You know, oh, got a couple ideas, pocket full of dreams. You know. <laughs> Gotta got love him. Gotta gotta love that can-do attitude that comes only with you. <laughs> he needs it. He needs it. Street Fighter doesn't need the win, right? But the Street underdog Fighter story. The win. Yes, this is this. That's what this tournament has been. The underdog story. Congratulations to the first slam dunk, our first ever versus wolves experience of the year. <laughs> 2023 the best collection 2023 the best collection draws to a close what a goddamn champion what a goddamn champion incredible so um <sighs> yeah. wow so i don't know Willie. i don't know um i guess we do this that's... again next year yeah two. i mean you know that's that's cool and all but what if <gasps> We did it again next month. But wait. Will he... A year will not have passed since then. Are you sure? Hang on. Let me open my calendar here. Oh, no. Not even close. What Will do we he... do? What if we started... What if we started a book club? But not just any book club. The most powerful book club. And the books, Wooly, can be anything. What if... Anything? Anything. Anything. What if the way we do this is I recommend you a piece of media or basically anything... And you recommend me a piece of media and basically anything, or basically anything, then we go away for a month, we come back, we talk about it, we hash it out, and then we recommend two more things at the end of that episode and talk about them the month after. Two more things and more things and more things. And what say we just see how we go? You have one month to complete the homework. And One file month. in your report. Mm-hmm. Recommend or die. Recommend or die. Most powerful book club. Most powerful book club. Book last. Ah, yes. I'm in. Sounds good. Fuck, fuck it. Let's do it. What else are we doing? Um, do you so have yeah. anything in mind? In particular. Okay. I do. As we approach the end of the of the play bar. <laughs> Wooly, from hell's heart, I stab at thee. Fear and hunger. Are you serious, bro? <laughs> yep. <laughs> 
But with a caveat, you ain't getting off on fear and hunger mode. You ain't getting off on fucking baby mode. You will be playing on terror and starvation mode. Okay, hold on. One or two? One. One. <sighs> I have to cut the dicks. Oh, Don't worry, I'll, I'll, se- I'll send you a sensor mod. Okay. Okay. Fear and hunger. This Fear is the and hunger, Wooly. We're going to be back, I would say, in or around the 20th of 20... 20 around the 20th of January. Keep an eye out. Keep an eye on the socials. We'll be back for episode two. But, Wooly, what do you got for me? Are you familiar with, or have you heard of, a little anime known as Gunbuster? Wooly? I've already seen it. Oh, oh, God damn it. And that c- 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 combo breaker. <laughs> combo breaker. <laughs> our first ever combo breaker. Fuck. Okay. All right. You know. So you see, because mm, I wanted to talk about that ending. Okay. Destroyed me. Destroyed me. Love the. Oh. It's available. It just got dubbed. It's on Crunchyroll, by the way. So if you, it's an amazing dub. It's really, you can go back. Oh, it's and, an and incredible enjoy anime. Fucking brilliant. Okay. All right. You know, you know, of yeah, course. Yeah, all yeah. right. All right. All right. All right. I now have to step it up then. Mm hmm. See, I was being kind of nice. I was kind of just going for a little emotional, like little, little one, two okay. right there. Okay. But you're yep, coming yep. out with the fucking heavy hitters. So oh. I'm going to, I'm going to skip right to the heavy hitters then. John, mm-hmm. your job is to find the Dublin FGC and attend a local. And oh, play. no! <laughs> oh, not social! Not something and social, no! Your job is to go into the world oh. and play in a tournament or participate in a fighting game local in your community. <laughs> not people? No, not a social thing? Oh, God, fine. Ugh. Go what about, play like, some what, Street okay, Fighter. What about entering at Street Fighter 6 tournaments at MAGFest? No, this, that'll be too late. Fuck, okay, fine. Fine, fine, I'll go talk to people. <laughs> oh, I'm so mad. I'm, oh, oh, boy. oh Ollie, I was, I was I trying to I swear to God, I swear to God, I am going to make you suffer for this. You have entered <laughs> hell, my friend. Oh, my fucking God. I tried to be nice. I tried to give you Gunbuster, but then you combo <sighs> broke me. So now this is what happens. I'll see fine. you next month. Fine, I'll search out. I'll I'll search out the least racist fighting game group I can find. <laughs> and... <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm so pissed off. Okay, oh. fine, fine, fine. Good to know that what it is. are on the table. Done and done. Understood. Understood. Enjoy fear and hunger. <sighs> oh, okay, let's let's bring it down. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on episode one of iPad 12s. I hope you guys had a great time. I genuinely did. Uh Wooly, this was a fucking blast. And I think, you know, we've both in our own way kind of wanted to do something like this for a while. Um I can't wait. And just thanks everyone for listening. Go subscribe to the YouTube, go subscribe to the podcast, look us up on Spotify, fucking whatever. We're gonna be there. Um, and yeah, let's let's fucking do this. I'm Wooly Versus. I'm my Patch Wolf. We are Versus Wolves. <laughs> 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 <laughs>